What's up? This is Mav Hoffa. It's my man Carl Payne. I need y'all to click the link below yeah. and go vote for my guy. He's up for the Best out Outstanding Supporting Actor in a Television Movie, Limited Series, or Dramatic Special. Ah! Go vote! Yes! Click the link! Click go the vote, link! Motherfucker. Ooh, let's get it! <laughs> Soul around. Look around you, man. You can find inspiration. You can find discouragement. It all depends on you. Perception is everything. Some people just hear another song. Some people hear the greatest. A nigga used to have no chill. Nowadays I bump side A. Traffic on bumper to bumper stuck on the highway. Yeah, yeah. No, I got a lot of I got a lot of friends, a lot of you know, a lot of affiliates, a lot of association out there. You know. The way you're smiling while you say that is scary. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just, you know, it's it's interesting because because of how I grew up here, right? You know, I grew up at a time where everybody, things were happening, things were changing, things were moving, you know what I mean? Like it was a, like if you didn't grow up in the 80s, like if you wasn't like a, you know what I'm saying? The 80s was the shit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The eight, No matter for good or bad, it was the shit. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> a lot of people I became friends with because of what they was doing and what I was doing. And it's, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like somebody goes, man, you need to stop doing that because you, you better at this. Do mm -hmm. this. Stick with that. Do you put that. you out the car. Put me out the car. Yeah, you understand what I'm saying? Totally. But, but they still wanted my, they still want, still wanted what I had in terms of my connections. Clout. Right. Right. And so for, for that fact, then it gave me clout, but it gave them access. If that makes sense, right? So, you know, I, you know, but I didn't know to what extent people was doing stuff. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense? You don't ask those questions. Right. I just, you know, I'm making introductions to different people, you know what I'm saying? Because they want to access to a certain, you know, my world. Because like, you have to understand, like, I was 15 years old. I was in the club with Grace Jones right here. Like, you me. That's Grace Jones. This is mine. Hmm. <laughs> All on me. Like, ooh, look at him. He's so sexy. Got hair on his chest. <laughs> oh, his look, it's got, ugh. I could eat him up. And she had a chicken. She, I remember she had a chicken wing at the time. And I'm like 15, 16 years old. I'm like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> it's going down. Right. <laughs> but I was used to that kind of lifestyle. Mm -hmm. But then niggas ain't know I had to jump on the train, go home. Wait, 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 wait. Don't speed past that. You smash great shows? <laughs> I didn't say that. You didn't say I didn't say that. No, you said no. I was going out. Nigga, I was nights. scared of Grace Jones. Are yeah, you was... kidding me? Oh. I was right. scared of Grace Jones. I ain't never experienced nothing like that. And she was like, she was <laughs> bold, bold. Mm. I was like, oh my God, she's gonna, she gonna kill me. She's gonna tear me up. I ain't ready for this. <laughs> I ain't ready for this at all. <laughs> I ain't ready for this at all. You know. Um, but you know, it's like you can't rewrite those experiences. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like going to the club at 15, 16 years old with Mike Tyson. And Ty Mock and you know it's a weird bunch group of people and this nigga will forget we came together like Ty Mock, Bruce Leroy Ty Mock, yeah, wow, I was in that movie, yeah. So, so in the pizza shop, oh, in the pizza shit, shop when the shooting went down, yeah, when it, when it, when, when when they, when they came in there and trashed, trashed the anyway. The long story short, it's like we would go out. I never forget the time one time we went to the Red Parrot and. Tyson was on one, and he had a sister with him, and he was like, hey, Carl, you're going to take her inside. You're going to hold her hand, and I want you to be with her. And I was like, she look like you, nigga, in a skirt. Like, I'm, not, like, I'm not about to walk in here holding her hand like that, but Yo. if he told you to do it, like I was like, all right, cool, let's go. And then we went inside immediately. I was like, yo, I got to go to the bathroom. I'll be right back. <clears throat> got lost. <laughs> but he would. it was so funny because... You know, you know how when people just switch up on you, but you don't realize it'd be like, oh, bipolar or this or different shit like that. Cause that nigga would like look at me like, and I'm like, hey, we we came together, dog. Like we we here. We remember we rode together. Right. And he would go, like, God damn. You know, you just be like, yeah, That's I ain't fucking. Yeah, yeah. Let me, let me get up out of here. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and your man looking at you like, wait a minute, who let this nigga? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like, yo, we we together. <laughs> What's this? Oh, it went so, up. So that was my first that was my first taste of what you call it? Ne- no, 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 no. Nepotism, all kind of stuff. I learned like five lessons in this one thing. So I auditioned for the kid, Richie. Oh, the the younger brother. Yeah. And it, it, it came down to between both of us, like the two of us, because like back then. Used to have to audition like seven times. Like, you know, you had to beat everybody, beat everybody, then then come down to the last it's two. It was like tournament style auditioning. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. crazy. Get down to the last two, and it was me and him. And Barry Gordy did the movie. The movie is heavily music based. That's Master G's younger brother mm-hmm. from Sugar Hill Gang. So I was like, oh, I see what's happening. And then it was like, but we're going to make you his friend. Cool. The other kid was the nephew of the director. The white kid? No, the other black kid. Right. Okay. Then he became the friend. And then I, just like they threw me a bone to be in this scene. Now, there was a whole big scene before that. It was a whole big scene. We was playing video games. I was whooping his ass in the video game. He was talking shit. And then we got a slice of pizza. Like, it was a whole little little scene, scene just us. That. What? Then he comes in and breaks it up. I'm sitting there like, yo, I got 10 people in my family in the audience for the premiere. Mm. I'm, like, I'm like, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. And that's when I realized you could end up on the, on the cutting room floor. Yeah. Like... But that was the first time my name was ever in credits on anything. First you know time. Yeah, like, like like when the credits was rolling on mm-hmm. the big screen, my name was right there. And my mom was like the happiest ever. But it's, it's, it's shit like that when you grow up, like thinking nothing's going to happen. You'd be like, it's never going to happen. It's never going to Something bad is going to happen. Like it's never going to come to fruition. It's never going to happen. Where, is, where does that thinking come from? By the way, we wrote. Um... I think maybe just either having an awareness of environment Mm -hmm. because you don't really have anybody that looks like you that did it. Or from your block, from your neighborhood. Yeah, yeah. So and that's that's usually the mentality. You understand what I'm saying, right? Yeah. And and so you know. I don't know, because you, once you realize where you are, right? Because like I said, you don't realize that you're poor or you're in a situation until you go somewhere else, right? Where they're not poor. Where they're not poor. Right. I didn't know money was all one color. I thought the tens were green, fives was brown, yeah, like yeah. whatever them food stamps was. Right. I thought that was everybody had. <laughs> right. I didn't know. Right. I didn't know, you know, I thought everybody had wicks and mm. kaboom and King Vitamin. I That's didn't know. <laughs> King Vitamin. I didn't know. I didn't know. They ain't from that ever. They wouldn't understand that shit. You know what I'm saying? I ain't know. I ain't know until, Come you know, on. but I was always bust to school. Like, I never went to school uptown. So I was always bust. You know, my mom lied about where we lived and all of that because you had to be zoned and then, you know. Right. And so I was literally, like, always the only black kid in my class. Mm. And then, you know, I'm making friends with, like, the, um, you know, the dude who wrote the music for um, Charlie Brown, Peanuts, Charles Schultz. So I'm, I'm friends with his son now, and they, they live above Carnegie Hall. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? And I'm like, they're like, God, what the, what? In the- Carnegie Hall is a castle. You understand what I'm right. saying? Right. And the crazy part is, everybody always want what they don't have, right? He mm-hmm. never wanted to be home. He always wanted to be uptown. Hmm. And they would have his maid drop him off late at night to me, and we live in the project. I'm like, you want to be up here? What's wrong with you? Like, you crazy. Right. Let's go to your house. Let's go to your house. (laughs) You're on 57th Street. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, you know, but you don't know until you know. Right. And then when you start seeing that difference in the way people live and how things are, or access, it's really about access, right? And that's that was the that was the disparaging part, because it was like, man, but now I'm actually in 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 
I'm doing things where those access and opportunities are presenting themselves. But it was still that doubt that <sighs> something bad is going to happen. It's not, it's not going to happen. Mm. Something bad is going to happen. That, that didn't come from like a family member or people around nah. you? What, nah. was the, what was the encouragement like in your family? Everybody loved it. Everybody was like, do it. You know, I, um, my mom was like my biggest supporter. My mother was like, you know, any, any audition, every, anything I had, she would take me on mm. my auditions or, or, you know, back then we used to, we used to move around by ourselves, like a lot different than kids now. Like I used to be moving in this city at a young age by myself. Latchkey. That's how it was. Yeah. You know what's up. Yeah. Latchkey. We catch the bus. You know, you got directions, instructions, you know, I mean, come on. We used to go to the store. Yeah, um, Newports, um, Cool Miles, and here. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Nice. Yeah. I remember doing the shopping for my crib when I was like eight years old. Yeah. Picking out the coupons and all that by myself Yeah. in the grocery store. But yeah, yeah, yeah. we did a lot. It was a, a different lot. time, bro. It was a different, different time. time. I would man. never. It was better back send then. Send my though. kids out like. What? Today? No. No. No, you can't do that. Can't let them move around like that either. That, but they don't yeah. know how to either. That's the difference. Like, they don't know. Think about it. When we grew up, we learned a lot by doing stuff ourselves. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, and we learned, we learned how to be and move no matter what city we in, where we are. We knew how to, you know, nowadays kids got too much it's, it's technology. Way, it's, it's way riskier to learn on your own now. The, con the stakes are higher. Consequences are higher. Mm -hmm. Back then, you do the wrong thing, you might get beat up, you might get robbed. It's not that crazy. Fact, you come home yeah. with some ripped up clothes. Now, yeah, kidnappings, shootings. Plus, you, you got your ass beat. That was going on back then. Going on back then. But here's the thing. No, no. Here's the thing. They took they took too much power away from their parents. That's what happened. Because you used remember you used to get your ass beat. You get a you would get your ass beat. your core brooms. All of that and and they would say. If you didn't, you you know, I'm gonna call call them, call child services. Go ahead. Back then, ahead. It was oh, what BCW, what, no. whatever it was called. Go ahead. Yeah. And, and as soon as they gonna take as you soon as they first. leave, I'm gonna beat your ass again. <laughs> as soon as I get out, I'm fucking you up again. <laughs> <laughs> fucking you up again. Yeah, like you you were scared to death to do dumb shit. Right. Because you didn't want to consequences or say dumb shit. Consequences, right? Like your son calling you bro. We was talking about that earlier. <laughs> Fuck is you talking to? Your daughter calling you bro. What's up, bro? That's crazy. No. Kids is doing that shit now. That didn't work. <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> Maddie, you're going to be horny in a minute, bro. <laughs> you're going to be wild. <laughs> That's, not That's, not That's not a pause. That's not a pause. My boy, my boy going right. to be horny. Watch. I let him handle it. You can be, <laughs> How do you tell your man, yo, you're going to be horny? You're going to be horny. Keep drinking. You're going to be over there licking the chair. <laughs> licking the chair. <laughs> I'm never calling you from jail, bro. Huh? Ever. Ever. You're not supposed to. What's up, my nigga? You horny in there? Like, <laughs> what? Says that shit. What? <laughs> <So, laughs> yo, tell him. What? Nah, bro. Chill. <laughs> Yo, bro. Who called you? Who called you and said that? <laughs> who called you? Like there's niggas in the well, yeah, room. Whoever called you. Is this like a said, story that they tell when don't they get back home? Don't call them no more. <laughs> don't call them no more. <laughs> so y'all, y'all be in the crib chilling, and the nigga be like, "Yeah, I called so and so today and shit." What did he say? I don't know, man. I was like, "Yo." You know, just checking on him. I was like, you horny in there? You good? <laughs> <laughs> it happens. <laughs> it happens. <laughs> yeah. That's terrible. Man, I can't wait to get home. Give me some pussy, that nigga. Like, that like, should not happen. Shit, that should not happen. That's just, you know what that is? You know what that is? That's a nigga who, who, who ain't been to jail, but he like, <laughs> I wonder what shit be like in there. That's, nah. that's who that nigga is. Nah. That's who that nigga nah. is. <laughs> What? Oh. Yeah, the army in jail, they, they they put stuff in your food to make no, you, they give you um, to suppress your, your your sexual appetite. Wow. Uh, okay. Sure. Why not? Yeah. Sounds about right. I'll take a double. 
<laughs> take a double. <laughs> give me, give me, take a double. Give me, give me, give me, give me another one. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you do no the morning ice. count, nigga. No wake ice. up. Uh, no ice. Give me. Uh, right. give me. Imagine you fifty dudes in the door. Like, like, yep, nobody got raped in here today. Drank them juices. Yeah, give me. Yeah, you got to come on. Trudeau. I shook them juices. All right, we ready? We ready? <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs> Yo, all right, we back. <laughs> My expert opinion, the greatest show in the world 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 world, 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 world. Hit that like, hit that share, let everybody mm-hmm. know you in here. Of course, you know paper unless you's a motherfucking hater, 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 hater. And don't be one of those. Hit the button. I want to give a special shout out to Green Magic. Green Magic, they sponsored the show today. I got some goodies. Mm, I'm going to go home later. Ah, that's good right there. So shout out to Green Magic. Uh, you can find them 161. Poos Patuck Lane. Poos Patuck. Poo, I almost said Pat Poos Tuck. Pat Poos Patuck Lane, uh, Mastic, New York, Long Island. Go reach out to them. Get some of that good Green Magic. You heard? You heard? And anybody else interested in sponsoring the show, just reach out. We here. Mac. Yo, what's the stuff. word? Poos Patak. Happy like birthday to James DeWitt Yancey, better known to y'all as Jay Dilla. He would have been 50 years old. Rest in peace, too. Rest in peace. One Rest half for the Uma. Salute to Q-Tip. Salute to uh, Slum Village. Salute to the whole Detroit. But one time, one time, one time for Jay Dilla. Changed my life. If you know, you know. Rest in peace. You are a legend. Facts. Mm-hmm. Yo, my man Bloody back in the building. What up, son? What's up, what up D-Boy? What's, yo, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. That one hand that is again. You seen it, right? The one hand Mad is disrespectful. Mad hand. disrespectful, Mr. Son. T right now, my nigga. So when we going shopping, son? When that we going shopping, man? That was on, on top of the rings. That yeah, was when we going shopping? <laughs> you playing, man. <laughs> you he said playing. I'm broke. Shout out to the gang, 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 gang. Um, I got my man Reem in the building. He's representing Green Magic, Splat Murder. What's up? I'm happy to be here. You know, happy to be here. Round Legends. Shout out to my man, Matty Tosca. Doing great things. Got movies coming out and all that. Yes, sir. What's the movie? Pale White Horse. What's the other one you got with Gravy? That's right. Go check my boy out. Word. Matty. Matty. I was going to give you a shout out because, you know, I ain't got no roles in the movie. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) We try to work it out though. We're gonna work it out. We're gonna work it out. Now, tonight, we got a legend in the motherfucking building. If you're from my era, if you're from the era after me, if you're from the era era after that, <laughs> you grew up with this man. You know what I'm saying? We 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 saw him uh from young in the pizza shop, you know what I'm saying, sucking and dodging, roundhouse kicks and shit. You know what I'm saying? Then we saw him on the Cosby show. Then we saw him on one of the greatest shows that ever been on television, Martin Lawrence show. Listen, man, Carl Payne is here in the show. Yeah. yeah. Legend. I- Iconic. Legend. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Iconic. So why did you book me a flight on Spirit? <laughs> I did not. You did. I did not. If I'm such a li- how I you put me that. on Spirit? I didn't do that. N- Come on, man. It was son, a me. Son. It was a spirit? me. Spirit? You thought I it was didn't sprint. Book spirit. I left last week. I just got here. <laughs> you understand know what the fuck I'm saying? <laughs> Come on, man. Put that I would on never. You. No, dude, Yo. it's the mega bus of the sky. We made 94 fucking stops. Yo. Seriously. How much, how much was your bag? How much they charge you for your bag? Yeah, this is the, they think they funny, man. They funny. You funny. You funny. It's cool. It's cool. I'm here safely. No, know? seriously, with spirit? Yeah, that come on. Mean. Come on. That was your people, that was man. Not mean. It was. I couldn't I even. Call your agent. I bet come you on. wasn't. They don't even have, like. I'm, you said it was a mega bus in the air. Ain't no, ain't no spirit on spirit, man. Come on, man. We only go through Delta. That was somebody else. Guaranteed. They got seats that feel like like baby car seats. Like, they feel like, they feel like little folding chairs with cloth on them. The you know, strap like, come yeah, over like, like this. Come on. Man. Crazy. It's cool, Listen, though. It's I, cool. I waited, uh, I say about 20, 25 years to ask this question. It's very, it, it's something that's plagued my mind forever. What was Tommy's job, bro? 
<laughs> like for real, what was his job? Like we, everybody, was, what was his actual job? Was he a drug dealer? Because I used to think he was a drug dealer. Tommy ain't got no job. <laughs> like, what you talking about, yo? <laughs> Come on, man. But was it like, like, yo? I swear, because you used to wear the leathers all the time. Yeah, like, yeah. Think it's Come, a drug no, you know what it was. You know what it was, man. We. We tried our best to emulate, not even emulate, just bring what we knew was real. Right. And you know there was always that one dude. The uncle. The always that what had everything, had the ring on every finger. Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> had the ring on every finger, do his hands like this a lot. You right. know? Right. And his knees moved together. <laughs> But you never knew what he did. Right. He was always fly. He always had everything. Yeah. So, you know, we we tried to bring a lot of those things that we grew up having to the um, to the screen. You know, but but in real in real life, um, first of all, Tommy was like my best friend. Tommy was definitely my best friend in real life, and um, he was like when everybody would say, you know, he ain't got a job. He would say, yes, I do. I'm being about my father's business. Mm. That's my job. Mm. And he was really heavy into, you know, um, changing, making a change for the future, like kids and, and, and reaching back and giving back and making sure that, you know, young boys knew how to grow into men mm. and, be, and be responsible and response able. Like he was really a child advocate in terms of, you know, the future. And so. Wow. It's always funny when everybody talk about not having a job. And I'm like, oh yeah, he did. He had a big ass job. Right. You know. Yeah, he was he was he was very, very much a mature voice on the show. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he'll be missed. Love Tommy. Tommy yeah. Wild. Yeah, rest in peace. All right, let's rewind back. Because yeah. we watched the clip earlier. Okay. You got casted for uh, The Last Dragon. <laughs> And, and you learned a lot of things yeah. during that casting. Um, can you break that down for us? So I was new. I was a newbie to the game. And um, back then you used to have like a lot of different, the process was longer, right? Because you would audition and then you would get a call back and then you would get like a second call back and you go to the producer session and then, so it was like a lot, right? right. Tournament style. <laughs> different, right. different, you know, you got to be a different animal. And you had to win the room over every time. Long story short, that was one of the first things I learned on how to audition and how to whatever. And it came down between me and the cat that was playing Richie originally. And, um, you know, there was like, um, they said they had some other roles they wanted me to look at. And I was like, cool. So they, they eventually brought me back for this other role. But that was the first time that I realized you could end up on like the cutting room floor. Because we had a whole scene. I was just happy to be a part of the thing, you know what I'm saying? And we had a whole scene going on. And you see the movie and everything is gone before that. Mm. And then now you just see me helping them out the trash can, like, you are right, Mitch. <laughs> I don't even know if that made it. It's like, it's like in the background. I, right. I think you see my mouth moving, but you don't see the words coming out. Right. But that was the first time I learned, like, yo, you can end up on the cutting room floor. A lot of people in the movie were related. And then you'd be like, oh, so they got the job. Oh, that's called nepotism. Okay. Mm. Stuff like that. Mm. You know, but that was also my first experience, like, doing a movie. And that was the first time my name was on the screen, on the big screen. So my mom was happy. That's fire. You know that was mean? the first time. I mean, and that movie's iconic. <laughs> Man. So, like, like, what was it 80s. like when it was out? Like. Oh, it's you're, crazy. You're, you're how old at this time? I think I was 14, 15 years old. 14, yeah, 15. I think I was 14, 15 years old. And, um, but I think I was doing Cosby at the time too. So I, I was doing, yeah, I was, I was oh, cockroach. So you had, oh, you had, ah. I was cockroach already. Right. Nope. I was Couldn't just about, have been. no, no, I was just about right. to. I was okay. just about to be. Right. That's a redemption story there, too. Right. Because an old boy was mad cocky who got the part of Richie. Mm, okay. He was mad cocky, you know, because when I came to the set that day, he had already been working and, you know, he had a trailer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, I was like, oh, this is nice. Right. I was like, I'm right. like, oh, this is nice. He's like, yeah, you know, he was like, yeah, yeah. He said, I was his actor. Like, yeah. I was like, 
right. He had these red leather pants. He was trying on these different pants and went pause, pause, pause. Not in front right. of me. Right. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> you know, he, <laughs> he's in the trailer, like, yeah, the red ones. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so those. It, yeah, so yeah. he was basically, you know, he had just got the Michael Jackson jacket. You know, he was showing off his right. stuff. Mm -hmm. All I could think, you know, I don't know if he was trying to make me jealous, but you know where I come from, we don't trip on that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All I looked at was like, oh, my turn coming. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's fly. That's fly. Where you see mine. Right. So, yeah, yeah, it was interesting. And then the Cosby show. And then the, the, you got Cosby. So, <laughs> fast forward, auditions for Cockroach, and he was there. He was there again. And he made it down to, like, I mean, you know, certain people back then, you would always just go head to head with them on different jobs. And, um, yeah, he, he was like one of the last people there too. And then he came out the room and said some real cocky shit like, y'all could go home. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, wow. Like, oh, you know what I mean? Right. But people do that. People, that's like a warfare. When it came back to auditioning back in the day, people would really try to psych you out in the room before you go in the room. Mm -hmm. Like zap your kind of, I was too young to realize what was happening. But, you know, I took it personal. I was like, so he said that crazy shit. And I was like, damn, he got it again. But then she was like, uh, Mr. Cosby would like to see you for a second. Right? And I, so I went in the room and I was just like, so did I get the part? He was like, yeah, I'll never forget he had a big ass cigar. He was like, <laughs> and then he farted. <laughs> He farted. He farted right, he right, there, farted right in front of him with the cigar. He had a big ass cigar. He was like, he was like, what do you think I brought you in here for? And I was like, oh, okay, that's dope. That's dope. And then he sat me down and was telling me about how things are going to go and all of this. And when I came out, the girl was getting, the, um, the lady who was running the audition, she was getting cars for everybody to go home who didn't make it. And he was sitting there, he had this look on his face. And, I, and then she was like, um, you know, she was like, come here, let me show you the dressing room and stuff like that. I was like, all right, give me a second. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> so she was like, okay, it's just right this way. And I said, all right, cool. And then I just waited and I just looked at him. He looked at me, he just had a look like, yeah, all right, you got it. I was like, I think that car is for you. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's your car. Your car. You see the like, little nigga. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> beat it. <laughs> your ride is here. Out of yeah. all the names in the world, why cockroach? It was my understanding that um, a lot, all these characters were based off of you know his real family and his real family's friends and whatnot. And his son um, at the time had a, a friend with a really interesting or funny nickname, really unique nickname. So obviously you can't use the same names. So a lot of people looked at cockroaches as being bad from the hood, but he was like, let me flip it, turn it something good. Cause he was like, cockroaches are the strongest things that make it out, right? They, mm -hmm. they survive us. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a character based thing too, right? right. It's like they survive us. They're gonna, they're gonna be the one that's inherited. You know, so it was like a flip. But it was also, he said, as a name that like, People will remember. It's gonna, you, you gonna, that's gonna stick. Like, right. who, who does that? Mm -hmm. What kind of nickname is that? Mm -hmm. You're gonna wanna know what this kid is like, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's Yikes. crazy. Yeah. Well, you got that. You can't, can't, nobody forgets the kid named Cockroach, even mm -hmm. if you just remember not to let him in your house. That part. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, now, how many seasons would the, the, the Cosby show run about? Um, I don't know. I don't remember. Is how many it safe, was is it I, how many was that you, I on? You were on that show for about two, almost think, a decade. No, I think no, no, no. That's that's. I was only in there for like two years. Two years. Two years, but that's what happens with perception when you see. Um, that's not possible. Two years. That's on, it on the Cosby Show. Yeah. Yeah. No way. I'm telling you, I got I got a jacket to prove it. Like the two years that I was there, like is. <laughs> Yeah, no. It, it don't it, feel. It I, feels like. Mm -mm. No, it was only two years because the res, the reruns, and when you see right. stuff and you don't see it in succession from when you first saw it. Right. Because mm -hmm. if you remember back then, you know they showed stuff per season. Now you get stuff, and then the way you remember it, you're like, 
just like our show. They think our show was been on forever. I'm like, no, we only did five years on Martin. But you would think that it ran on forever. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Cause Two you, years. You and Theo, once he went to college, I wasn't there. He wasn't yeah, there he was anymore. Yeah. He had new friends. Oh, Theo, you bastard. You left your day one behind. <laughs> <with the school. laughs> Hell out ass. You punk ass. But, oh, but in man. real life, you and Malcolm, you guys were cool. I mean, we worked together. Like, right. you know what I'm saying? It was just, it was just work. You know what I'm saying? So. What ultimately led to you, you leaving the Cosby show? Because I heard a couple of stories. It was about <laughs> hair or you were yeah, got braids go ahead, or, go ahead, you know what I mean? Tell the story you heard. Bill was like, you look like a gang member or some shit like that. Nah, if, if I'm going to set this story straight, I'm going to set it straight. We did an episode of, it was the, um. Dance Mania episode. Dance Mania, right? Theo Huxable. No, no. That was the last episode. The one we did where I had to shave my head. Was that the same episode? It might be. I don't know. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. Dance Mania, you go on the show where you end up dancing with the hot okay. chick in the club. All right. So that's not the same joint. Okay, right. right. So that was because that was the episode we shot after that. That's right. Okay. Right. So what happened was the episode where we had to shave our heads, um, their hair person, right, hot combed my hair to make it lay down under the ball cap. Right. Right? And do you know what it's like to try to get your hair back? If you're shooting something like like right away, right? Boom. Mm -hmm. They stripped it. It yeah. straightened. Mm -hmm. Now, you got to wash it out because you got to go back to the thing that you did before that. Right. right. So, he must have put like a mild relaxer in my joint. Like a, you know. Right. I didn't do it though. Right. Mm -hmm. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And so, right. then after that, it didn't match. Now my hair don't match. The shot not matching because my hair text, it looks different. Mm -hmm. But I already had a good grain of hair, so to speak, uh, what y'all call good grain. But you know what I'm saying, right? Mm -hmm. So now- yeah, I was about to get political. Yeah. Yeah, you feel yeah. me? I was like, uh, what, what's good hair? What do we mean by good hair? <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. So long story short, continuity was off. Mm. And there were a lot of other factors that I believe that, you know, I became aware of after the fact, but, you know, he was on some like, I thought I told you, you know, about your hair, you know, this, that, and yet. Not, not, not like he told me about my hair before, but like the rules, like, we only do natural hair around here, mm -hmm. da, 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 you know, right. and all like that. And he got, you know, he was talking to me like, like I was a grown man, you know what I'm saying? And I How old were you at the time? 15, I think. Jeez. 15, 16 years 15, old. 15, 16. <laughs> but the way... When you say talking to you like a grown man... It was like, the word, it was what he was saying, how he was saying it, the way he was coming at me, the language he was using, how he came at me, I was like, I felt ambushed. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, you know, I'm just keeping it 100. You know, I ain't never told a story, really. Like, people who know me know, but... Right. Long story short, it felt like it was more than that. Because again, why would you, I never said I wouldn't cut my hair. I never said I would do anything different. I didn't do anything. Your makeup and hair people did this. I didn't did, do this. Did you tell them that? I didn't get a chance to. You just got screamed on the whole time. I just got, yeah. Yeah, I just got, and then it was like, it was like, so you see how that can get twisted and turned into, especially when, it's not an end, the end result is not good. It's like, oh, and then you got people for years like, who I think I am not cutting my hair. If, if Cosby says cut your hair, you know, like mm -hmm. I had to leave these comments and deal with this for years and years. I just let it go. I just let it live. I'm like, but you know, why? Why let it live? I mean, if, 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 if it wasn't it, your fault, no, 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 no. I'm not saying at the time, I, I didn't, what could I do at the time? What right, I'm saying but is, who's not relaying this message like, yo, this is how this happened? Again, 
So you be me. Well, tell me what you think it is. Mm -hmm. Again, I didn't say I wouldn't cut my hair or do anything that was asked of me because nothing was asked of me. So what does it sound like? Like 15, somebody told him something else. What does it sound? He just rambled. That's what I'm saying. Like, but but again, I'm 15. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting started in this thing. This is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Who am I telling no? You ain't have right. no manager. I, who am I saying no to about what? No, right. I, you know what I'm saying. Like that doesn't make sense. I'm not even that kid. Old enough to be a diva yet. You I'm can't. not even. I'm not even that kid in terms of I'm gonna tell somebody no, because that's the reason, right? That's what you right. hear. That's the reason right. that's out there that I said. I would not cut my hair like and he never gave you a chance to say Mr. But, Cosby. But it doesn't but it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. At this point whatever's happening is happening. This is what it was thought was happening or whatever it was thought. Mm -hmm. And then I'm left feeling like okay, this feels personal. This feels like it's about more than or or really that's what's happening right now because of that? Well, what else was going on? Nothing. Was well, dating I mean, Rudy or something? Come on, man, stop playing. Man, stop playing. No, you sound crazy. Oh, no, Max. Get out of here. No. All, all right. I'm saying is it was, you know, it was a little harsh at the time. I didn't feel like, I, I, and I had nothing to do with it. So I was just left feeling like, what the hell just happened? You understand what I'm right. saying? Mm -hmm. And as a kid going through stuff like that at the time, it was like, and he was on some like, you know, um, you're on probation and all this other crazy mm. stuff. And, you know, basically like, and then, and then I never got a call back. Wow. You never got a call back. I never got a call back. You said you're on probation. I, never, it, uh, never got, I can't. I mean. Uh, is it possible uh, he Jello heard pudding? about nah. you out at the club <sighs> with, with the ladies and, Listen, and the models who cares? And at 15? Like, like, what's going on? Who cares, man? All, all I'm saying is I don't know. Like I said, it came out of nowhere at the time. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I gave you all the facts. Right, now right. I get it. I'm giving you all the facts. Right. Was the Cosby Show a hostile environment? No. No. No, no it wasn't. No. It wasn't. It, no. So this was like, was, was this something that happened on the set? Or was this an isolated incident with you? What do you mean, did it happen on all right, the set? Did, was Bill in the habit of barking on people and just storming off and nah, putting them on probation? No, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. I didn't see none of that. I didn't see none of that. I mean, you know, there was, first of all, I'm not here to talk about him. I'm not going to talk and say nothing about, you know what I mean? Because I've never done it. I'm not a bash. I don't, right. I don't even talk about stuff. Right. Like me even being here with y'all, I don't do interviews. I don't do this. That's true. Right. I don't, you don't be looking, come on, man. What you mean? It's a barbershop. This ain't right <laughs> of you. Anyway, I'm just saying, at the end of the day, you know, that happened. Right. It just sounds like, it, it, I understand why he's asking as far as hostile work environment. It sounds like, I, listen, space, I was, it sounds I, unreasonable. But it sounds like this, somebody could have come up and said, Mr. Cosby, that's not what happened. Who, somebody would, else but did you, that. Just blah, like blah, anybody, blah. In, any, in any environment, right? In mm -hmm. any environment. Where your security is your job, are you gonna step up and say it was you? Well, somebody else could have said it, not that person. Again, who? Did it. who, who but oh, you, okay. you, you understand? I get, who, I get what you said. Who gonna say what? Nobody's gonna say anything. Right. right. When you understand the the way things go, and and you know, right. Especially, maybe they already know that he's capable of doing stuff like that. So, again. Who's gonna say something? So it sounds like that it is that kind of thing. Yeah, they, they kind I of. I wouldn't know though. Right? No, you wouldn't. Right. I but wouldn't they, know. But they did. The people who stayed silent and knew the truth. They, I don't they know. know. I don't know, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. That's that was above my pay grade and age grade at that time. I right. was just I was just having a good time. You Doing didn't have like a manager or nothing like that during that time. Not at that time. No. Not at that oh, time. Okay. Not at that time. It just it just sucks when you hear about things like this for flimsy reasons. But yeah. again, but again, again, I'm giving you the facts and what I know. Right. Right. You know, right. I'm giving That's you the facts and what I know. At the end of the day, a lot's happened for a lot more and a lot's happened for a lot less. Yeah. As you, as you yeah. continue to hear and grow in the industry and hear about things and, mm -hmm. you know, you be like, what? I mean, whole productions have been shut down over people fighting behind the scenes or, or some relationship happening behind the scenes. And it affects a whole slew of people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
you know, companies get sold because of, you know, this we breaking up. Uh, okay, well, you take this half of the company. What about everybody else? They ain't got no job. <laughs> well, being a kid from Harlem, yeah, I'm sure that that wasn't well received. Mm -mm. Someone, you know, speaking to you in a manner that you didn't feel like it was justified. <laughs> You're a jerk. <laughs> I'm just saying. You're a jerk. I'm just saying. You're, I'm so, read between the lines. Yo, you you really in tune with that. Okay, <laughs> right, you saw yeah. that. You caught that. Yeah. Yeah, so then that. Yeah, all right, so then what? There was that part. Yeah. Right. Of course. Because that, so that's what happens after you get angry, because you feel like, you know, wait a minute, you, I didn't do nothing. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Well, why are you talking to me like this? Smack shit out you, Bill. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you, Bill? Yeah. <laughs> Slap a pudding pop out of you, nigga. You yeah. crazy? <laughs> is young Carl gonna have to smack the shit out of Bill? <laughs> well, yeah, no, you know, <laughs> you, you asshole. I mean, well, I, you know. Yeah, yeah but see, that, 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 that's been, that's followed me. Not that incident, you know what I'm saying? Because again, I remember when it happened. T, you know, what was it wasn't TMZ back then. It was National Enquirer. Oh God! Everybody no. was calling, trying to get stories and all of that. And I just was like, because again, I'm not from that that space. Right. I'm not from that space. Right. You know. No publicist, no management. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not from the space of talking. They're just talking. It's nobody's business. <laughs> I'm I'm not from that space, and now y'all want to be, you know. Offer me money. So I, because I had a conversation with God. And God was like, what I got for you, can't nobody stop that. So, because that was my first fear and thought at the time was like, damn, I'm not going to work no more. I can't work no more. Or I'm going to get, you know. Black balls. Yeah. And that's the only thing that would have made me want to talk. But, at the, you know, it's like, but I had a conversation with God. And God was like, I got you. Don't worry about it. Okay. Facts. So in between that space mm -hmm. where that blessing finally landed you, um, what was that like? Not on the Cosby show no more. You, oh, you, that's um, when, well, you know, you still get to ride off of that for a minute, though. Yeah. You get to ride off of that. You eat. You get to eat for sure. What, what, know, so. what were the, what were the, the perks? <laughs> what? What the perks? Break it down. You're 16 years uh, old. Yo, first of you're all, you're on TV. What's the perks, my man? Like, right, like what? Perks. The yeah. perks was uh, being first of all being in New York City during that time, right? And being able to rub elbows and kick it with like the who's who of the who's who. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like I was going to Chow's before anybody knew about Chow's. I was there at 14. 14, mm. Mr. Childs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, four, 14 years old, Mr. Childs. Nobody even knew what Mr. Childs was. I'm in there with Keith Haring and all the different artists and models from back in the day. You know, and that was my world for a minute. But it was fucking with me because I had to keep coming back up here. <laughs> <laughs> back to Harlem. Okay. You understand know what I'm saying? It's crazy. It's crazy. I remember the first time, the first time I realized I was famous, it was, it was crazy the the reaction or whatever right because i was doing commercials and all of that before and then i was like considered the king of the saturdays at one point right i had this crazy hershey's commercial back in the day y'all find it i know you will i know you will i know you will but um i was break dancing you know what i'm saying in the commercial and whatnot and so everybody up town kept going what's up hershey <laughs> like, I ain't got a name. Some Hershey, Hershey kid. <laughs> so then I was like, oh, I'm going to tag that. That's going to be my new tag name. I'm going to start writing Hershey everywhere. <laughs> wow. That thought Hershey aged did. poorly. You feel what I'm saying, right? <laughs> then going to Studio 54 at 16, 15 years old. Can you imagine? What year is this? Studio 54 is 16 years old. I was at Studio 54 like, what wow. 19. What the, what the fuck? What is she doing? Stop doing that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It was, it, was, it was cray cray. So who, who, was in the, who was in the building the nights that you went? 
it, first of all, it was it was it was more the experience like that was there, the, the stuff that was happening. You couldn't believe what you were seeing in there. Like, I did, was you, like did you ever see Prince and Charlie Murphy in there? No, I ain't, I ain't see them. <laughs> I ain't see them in there. It was just wild. It was wild. Though. It was wild. It was like it was like they had. Uh, upstairs, like balcony type, almost movie theater situation in there. They had, I, I could have sworn I saw a unicorn in there. Like it was some crazy <laughs> shit, crazy shit happening in there, man. Right. And people was just doing whatever, anywhere and whatever. And it was levels, and I was just like, I felt like I was in a bad part of the Bible, nigga. I was like, I gotta, <laughs> go. I, was like I gotta get out of here, man. This is, this is crazy. Fire and brimstone about <laughs> yeah. to come crashing through. Yeah, this I was shit, like, yo, I gotta, I gotta no go time. home. I gotta get out of here. Let me, let me go hop the train real quick. Right. Mm. And you're still going back uptown. Still home. going back uptown. Yeah. I'm gonna hop the train. But like I said, I, don't, I remember the first time I was, I, I remember the first time it was crazy. It was a new edition concert, Madison Square Garden. And um, it was me and my best friend, this white boy named Danny. Now, Danny, Danny was not your typical white boy. Danny would come uptown on his own by himself all the time back then. Because we used to call him Larry Bird because this nigga could ball. He could ball your, ass, ball your ass up, right? Right. He used to come uptown when I wasn't around. But hmm. that's how everybody knew him already. So they didn't really fuck with him. Right. Long story short, we had the New Edition concert. We had just got there. And then um, the first opening act had just went off. And the lights came up. And Eddie Murphy was there, and everybody was like, you see the audience. <gasps> I was like, oh shit, they go Eddie. Next thing you know, who is it? Webster. No, Webster, right? It's Manuel Webster. Manuel Lewis. Lewis. Yeah, yeah, Manuel Lewis, right? <gasps> I see a bunch of chicks pointing my direction. And then I see the whole slew of them start getting up, and I'm like, who they see? Who they see? Who's here? And they bum rush me. It was like a whole slew of chicks, girls just bum rush me. Cops had to come get me, take me oh, backstage. Shit. Now I'm backstage. I wasn't supposed to be back there. Right. And they got a barricade, like a police barricade. I was like, what the fuck? My best friend was like, you made it. You made it. You <laughs> he was thinking about himself. Yeah. He wasn't thinking about me. He was, all right. he was, like, he was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, and it was like that feeling of just having that happen. I was like, oh, the power of this TV thing is crazy. Right. Because I just wanted to, you know, do what I did. So when the girls rush you, what they do? They, come on. You <laughs> <laughs> oh, almost had me answer that. Like, for real. Like, what you talking about? Right. So what's up? You horny? <laughs> you horny? <laughs> nah, you don't be feeling horny sometimes? <laughs> I was just asking. I was just wanting to know. Yo, I love this guy right here, man. <laughs> so then what happened? <laughs> oh, Go ahead. Tell me what happened. Turn it on, boy. Oh, turn it on. Yo. Oh, you started on. this shit. <laughs> this That's gas line. That's not my line. That's gas line. That's gas line. I don't say shit like that. Yo, that was all That's your fault. Yeah. <laughs> I had nothing to do with that. That was all your fault. Are you backstage? New edition. Backstage. First time meeting them because I had to be back there after that. Watch them, meet them. Um, it was wild. It was a super wild feeling. And then um, the um, one of the, the um, older cats from the Cosby show that was with us, he was like escorting us there that night. Um, I met Blair Underwood that night because hmm. he needed a ride and we had a limo. Hmm. And, you know, got escorted out. And he was, he had just, had, I think he had just did Crush Groove or some shit. So, <laughs> so he wasn't Blair yet. Right. Because he was, Taxi! <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Once that hits. Yeah. Crazy. All right. No more Cosby show. In between that space, what's going on? You're going on auditions. What was it like when you realized you wasn't coming back? Was what, when did that sink no, it was, in? It was painful. It, it was painful. It was definitely like, it was definitely, um, it was a moment. You know what I'm saying? It was definitely a moment. After two years, it had to be. It wasn't about the time. It was about the experience. It was about something happening that's negative. 
right. or something being taken away from you that you love. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever, like the opportunity and experience. And again, like we talked about earlier, when you already feel like these opportunities. Yeah. And then to feel like one of your own people is doing it, you're like, yo, what is going on? No. Yeah. So like I said, I ain't gonna lie, it hurt, of course. I'm 15 years old. Come on, man. I'm a kid. I know part of you must have held out hope that maybe he'll call back and... No. Nope, nah. It was in a apology voicemail. No, y'all stupid. Nah, y'all, come on. Nah, it was... <laughs> <laughs> you know... <laughs> I was thinking. No, nah, man. Nah. <laughs> nah, it was... It was, uh, it was supposed to happen. That's right. the way I look at things, man, in life, man. Mm. Like, a part of your journey and a part of the things that mold you and shape you have to happen, good or bad, because it's almost like your testimony. So you can testify, or because it's, it's your test, right? So, you know, it, it, it molds you, it changes you, mm. makes you become the person that you were supposed to become. Mm. Right. Right? We talk about bullying, for example, in school, right? Bullying. It's like we're so quick t- as parents to helicopter or to be like, you know, because we, we want to shelter us. them yeah. from some of the stuff we dealt with. Because, again, even though this is a different world, it was a different world then, too. And some of the things we dealt with were kind of crazy. Yeah. You know, we talk about it like, even as as a latchkey kid, being able to move around the city and do things at such a young age, we never do that today. Mm-hmm. Never allow our kids to do that today, right? Now, but being bullied and having to deal with that, having to deal with a bully, that's going to shape you. That's going to mold you into, or it's going to, you know, we're going to figure it out who you are. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we're going to figure it out. Uh, right? Survival of the fittest. But you understand what I'm yeah. saying? Like having to go through certain experiences, you have to. Right. Mm-hmm. You have to. I right. remember my son, my oldest son, my oldest son, when we took him out of private school and he went to public school. Hmm. And he had to like, he was being picked on constantly, constantly. Gangs in, L- in California too. He ain't never had this public school experience. You know what I'm saying? He was first class. Now he ain't coach. Like, he ain't, he ain't on spirit. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it wasn't me. Daddy, help. <laughs> Please. <laughs> but you're not, you know, but if it's in you, it's in you. Mm-hmm. It don't matter what the circumstances are or where you are, but when you your back is against the wall, when you confront it, or when somebody, you know, when, when you have to, you're going to show up. Yeah. And that thing that's in you going to show up. Right. Mm-hmm. And other people are going to be like, oh, damn. Because he went from being bullied to flipping the script. Right. And he got so crazy with it that he was doing the Kimbo Slice shit. Like, he was in back- backyard. Yeah, he was backyard. Boogieing in the backyard. Banging him. Banging him. Grown men who just got home. Banging him. Rolling. Yep. And... To where one of one of the people in Mayweather's camp was like, "We need you." Oh shit, that's crazy. We need you. So mind you, I'm on TV. This nigga running around building a name for himself, and I don't even know until I find a shoebox full of money in the closet. Like, well, you know, what? <laughs> <laughs> it ain't mine. Yeah, yeah. That's how he bought his first car. And I was like, please, man, you can't, look, you got options. <laughs> mm-hmm. <Right. laughs> you have right. options. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, you had, we had a bad six months. That's it. Like, we, we <laughs> <laughs> you have options, dog. You know what I mean? You was that trouble time? We back. We back. You ain't <laughs> we back. We good. We, we good stop now. this here. <laughs> <laughs> We're good now, This man. stops now. Yeah. And he promised this he would never up. do it again. And he did. So. How much was he fighting for? Like, like. That would that would imply that I knew. 
<laughs> or, or did you inquire afterwards? Yeah, yes, I inquired yeah. afterwards, but I never bet on any of this one. <laughs> let you know I've never done anything like that. You said, wait, well, what? You, you made what? <laughs> right, right. You think when, you can take him? What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> I think you could take him. I think you could take him. Oh, Carl in the back with the COVID mask, like. <laughs> <laughs> Does that guy's hat say rhythm spools? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> How, how old were you when you had him? What do you mean? Your son. How, how old were you when you had your first kid? Um, so he's my stepson, by the way. Mm-hmm. Oh, but he's okay. my son. Okay. But I've raised him since he was four. Mm. Four or five years old. Yeah. Okay. Because so. I, I, I think about I think about careers that shift when a child comes in. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And he talks about it all the time. Like when you have that first Still kid. Shifting. Things Whoa. shift into a different gear for you, and I think about that as creatives, as an actor, right? Who's seen how good it can get from girls rushing them at the garden, seeing how bad it can get on set, seeing how tumultuous things can be when you end up and on the cutting room floor, yeah. having a kid under those conditions. It puts a different, um, yeah, put, yeah, yeah. You're right. Puts you in a different space. Absolutely, because because you realize it's not just about you. Mm-hmm. And it's kind of like when you, you know, like uh, California is good for road rage, right? So if my family's in the car, I get more offended than if I'm by myself. And it's the same shit happening. Hmm. But that protective, that thing, yeah, yeah that, that responsibility and accountability, you like, damn, I guess I got to put up with this a little bit longer. Right. You know, so now when you get talked to a certain kind of way, you might be like, <sighs> I'm gonna eat that. I'm gonna eat that. I'm gonna eat that. Can I introduce you to my son? <laughs> <laughs> Follow me to the yard. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. Crazy. All right. So was was it in between that time that you met your girlfriend? Uh yeah, in between that. Um I was doing how I was at Howard. I was at Howard University. I was at Howard University and then um so that was a that was a crazy time. How it was dope. Yeah, um, Puff, Puff, Puff was dead. Yeah. Puff was there at the time. Yeah. yeah. So when I got there, you know, he was the man, and um, then you know, then somebody else was the man, you know, <laughs> and then you know, it was it was fun times. It was fun times, cause he he didn't know that I used to throw part like he when he was throwing parties, I used to throw parties too on the other side. Oh shit! Right, and then sometime you know. We, they would call the fire. Somebody would call the fire department and have a party shut down. I don't know what happened or how it happened. Oh, yeah. but then the other party was still going across town. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> <laughs> sound like some hate. Who no, was hating on who? I don't know who did that, and I don't even know how a bus got there to take everybody to. The other <laughs> <party>. <laughs> I don't even know. Yo, that's crazy. Okay, all right, let's break this down. All yeah. right, so Puff throws a party. Yeah, I'm just saying. Somebody called the fire department. That's crazy, cause cause I, I, it's probably the same person. It's probably the same person who used to call them bomb threats at, at um, the dorms. Because I remember being on campus, and, and you couldn't go into the freshman dorms, right? Because you you know after a certain hour, so it was a group of kids. I don't know who they were that would kind of put on these little nightgowns and shit, and 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 then all of a sudden all the girls would come downstairs like a fire drill. And then these same guys would go back into the dorm with these little nightgowns and caps on <laughs> and had their head buried what in the shit. The fuck? That was a girl, dope all idea. All the girls are falling because they had to. You could, you had to take bomb threats and shit like that serious. <laughs> he says with a smile on his face. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, I, it's from what all I'm right. told. It's in from case what I'm told. You're a little dense. You don't understand what's going on, right? <laughs> so my man used to call the you know, bomb threats. <laughs> And he used to throw in a little nighty and hide in the middle of the girls no. and sneak back upstairs and you know have his have a nice little time. And you stay here on puffs parties. Yeah, I I, I don't <laughs> listen, I never seen this person you're talking about. <laughs> All I know allegedly is, le- these are the stories I was told when I was in school. When I got there, it was already happening. I I just was like, what's going on? What's happening? Why are we out here like this? What's happening? And then and then I'll be like, Oh, I, I didn't get the memo about the, the nightgown. I'm sorry, I I didn't miss it. I thought we and then I didn't get to participate. And then the parties. Yeah. Yeah, I just, no, I don't know about that either. I don't know. <laughs> the 
party. That was crazy, though. I heard that that happened. Did that a lot of, yeah, a lot of time. Did, did it happen often? And only, only on nights that you guys had parties on the same night. <laughs> Read through the lines. Read between the lines. I don't know what script he got. <laughs> uh, he got the wrong script. That's My crazy. script say, it wasn't me. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, but yeah, no, I, was, but is it, that, I mean, I, I've heard about those years at Howard from a couple different people. Yo, we had the best time. Did I Angeletti was here? All of the, he yeah. was talking to, yeah. talking about it. Yeah, yeah, crazy man. It's the best time. It was like the energy. It's a, it's a vibe. It's a, you know, it's a thing that you feel it in the air. Mm. And it's also a, about a time and period in history, right? The climate of things that's going on. Everything is indicative and affects. The energy of where you are at that mm. time. Did any of you niggas graduate? No, we just left. <laughs> no, none of them. No, no we just yeah. left and yeah, and we was like, yo, where the money at? Oh, yeah, facts. The money's over here because here's Off what happened. Yeah. You know what? You know what happens yeah. again? It goes graduate. back to that. It goes back to that mentality of how often is the opportunity gonna roll around? Right. You gotta right. seize the moment, grab that shit, and go. And go. Right, and that's what happened. I was, <clears throat> I had, I had did a party. <laughs> I did a party. Uh, it was right before uh, either winter break or whatever. And my manager I have now, right? My manager at the time was like putting together a little role. Uh, um, she wanted everybody to come to California. She had four clients. She wanted us all to come to California for um, to see what it's going to be like in Cali, like. This is the next evolution of your career, mm. right? Right. And these are the agents you want to have. You want to have one agent over there and one over here. And so she took us out there to show us what that was like and to try to find this representation. So I drove cross country. Oh. They came to scoop me at like 5.30 in the morning from the club, got in the car, Griswold machine, station wagon, big school station wagon with the wood on the side. Oof. With four of the people I had never met drove cross country to California. First day and a half, I ain't speaking to nobody. I don't know these people. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't know none of these people. By the time we got to the West Coast, we was best friends. Right? There was two other dudes. One, two, two. Yep, two other dudes and a, and a, and a chick. And then we, I made her stop, and she was from Texas. White girl. Talk like this, say stuff like that all the time. Right. <laughs> I went to SMU. <laughs> <laughs> and she said one of her, there was supposed to be a party. So we was like, yo, let's stop at SMU. We partied all the way across the country. That's a movie in itself. Mm. That's when we stopped to go to the bathroom one spot in like the deep south. I went in there, it was like the wreckage stop. I was like, oh shit, no, let's get out of here. I'll hold it. <laughs> so I get to California. We get there late. We were supposed to have been there, but I got motherfuckers making stops on the road, right? right. Now we all best friends. We all staying in this one apartment called the Oakwood Apartments in, in Burbank. Um, it's like a lot, a lot of people come, come yeah. out there, that's where they first stay. Yeah. Yeah. It's right. like corporate housing, right? right. Mm -hmm. So we all in the same apartment. Guys on one side, girls on the other side, right? And now she gonna have us going auditions and things like that and trying to get representation. Back then we didn't have cell phones. Everything was a landline. They kept calling. Yo, chicks would call and be like, hi, can I speak to, um, can I speak to Ron? It's like, there's, there's no Ron here because they didn't have to change the number, mm. right? So one day, one day after like, 15 phone calls. I'm like, yo, who, Ron who? And she was like, Jeremy, duh. I was like, wow. The OG. I said, <laughs> he got his old apartment. I said, he's not here right now, but <laughs> what time will you possibly be coming through? And she was like, just tell him to meet us by the hot tub on the north side. At seven tonight, I was like, bet. 
Now, I've only been in California for two weeks. Two weeks. Two weeks, right? In Ron Jeremy's old crib. In Ron Jeremy's old crib. I didn't think about how nasty that crib might have been at the time, right? (laughs) All I could think was, who was this on the other line that wants to meet at the jacuzzi tonight at 7? So I tell my roommates, I'm like, yo, yo, we got to go to the jacuzzi tonight. Why? What happened? I was like, who do you think Ron is? Who do you think Ron? Ron and Jeremy. They're like, what? Ron Jeremy? I'm like, yes, Ron and Jeremy. So tonight, we got to go to the jacuzzi at 7. It was like, bet. That was the same day that I had just got a deal on a TV show, right? It was a pilot that Stan Lathan and Russell Simmons was producing, right? And I had just signed a contract for the pilot. It was going to pay me. Like, ugh. I was like, ooh, about to get this money. I wanted to go out and celebrate. And that's when I ran into the the, the person who ended up being my wife. Oh, uh, damn. Yeah, I ran into her. She was calling your crib for Ron Jones? No, no, no. Oh. You stupid. <laughs> you stupid. No. 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 You married him. No, no, no. no. What's going What's on? on? No. <laughs> no. I thought you was from Harlem, man. Don't get killed. Don't get killed in here, man. Please, yo. Come on. Ah. Come on. He yeah, said, don't get yeah, killed yeah, there. Yeah, don't get killed. Huh? <laughs> nah. When I was leaving to go, when I was leaving to go out to celebrate, right. she was at the elevator. She was at the, okay. she was at the elevator. <laughs> and, you know, I had seen her before because I had honestly, you know, I went there. I had seen um my stepson's father? Grandfather. Grandfather. Mm-hmm. My stepson's grandfather. And you know, where we come from, we borrow everything. I was like, I seen him, I just got there, ain't had nothing. I was like, yo, I need some sugar for some tea. I'm trying to make some tea. I just finished working out. He was like, all right, come on with me, young man. And then took me to their apartment and was like, this this young man wanna borrow some, what you want? Some sugar. And she was like, what? And I was like, yeah, you know, I felt, I felt you know, like we borrow everything where I come from. You know, you, know, you ask your neighbor for what? You be like, my mom say, can she get some soap powder? Mm-hmm. My mom say, can she borrow the vacuum? Yeah, y'all, got a, y'all got a slice yeah, of bread? Yeah. <laughs> that's a fact. Right, fact. So I didn't have no shame in that shit at all. But I had seen her, and then I was like, I see you. I was in a great mood, invited her out on a date. I was like, yo, we about to go catch a flick, and you know. So now we having a good time. We all having a good time. I think it was that Steven Seagal flick, that first one. Hard to what, kill? Hard to kill. Hard to kill, yeah. Yeah, we yeah the first joint we in there you know, and um, uh, my roommate real real slick little white boy looked like Rob Lowe, he was like <laughs> you remember Rob was the shit back in the day right, you know what I'm saying? you look like Rob he's a pretty motherfucker right and he was like looking at her and you know so now he trying to, I'm like nigga what are you doing yo. Like yo, she, I invited her. You know, you, you know what you, yeah, you know what you don't know. This ain't for everybody. Right. Say, yo, right, right. Move your hands, son. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> so, she tells me about this later. Like she's like, oh, I thought y'all was bugging. I kept saying, what the fuck am I doing here? Because she was like in the middle of it, right? Right. So we have a great time. We get back to the apartment. I'm ready to keep things going, and they like. <laughs> hot tub they tub. like yo hot tub hot right, tub right. you know i'm like oh yeah so my stupid ass i'm like yo you want to go to the hot tub let's go to the hot tub everybody go to everybody my other roommate she she <laughs> girl too everybody coming let's go to the hot tub right. Ooh, hot, hot tub fun in the hot tub <laughs> <laughs> too hot, hot tub. <laughs> we get to the hot tub all i could think was ooh, where she come where you guys get and then there's this couple that gets into the water. This couple gets in, and then they, they you know, they sitting there as an old, you know, looks like an Italian guy, right? I just, I'm being stereotyped, but yeah, hair, chains, you know. Chain. Yeah. Sitting there, big titty chick. After about 15 minutes, white boy go, hustler, hustler, uh, uh, January. Oh! And she's like, oh my God! And I'm like, what the fuck? And they having this whole conversation, right? About how he's like, dude, you know how many times I jacked off to you? I fucking jacked off to you so many times. I'm like sitting there in the hot tub. She looking at me, I'm looking at her. Everybody look, I'm like, yo, what the fuck is going on, right? (laughs) So she gets uncomfortable. So she like, let's jump in the pool. I'm like, all right, yeah, let's 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 move over here, right? So we continue to have our, you know, little little talk and we talking over here, look back, everybody gone. Then he realized what happened to him, right? Later that night, 
I get back to the apartment. My two roommates get back. They're like, yo, you missed it, dude. Bro. Oh, you have no idea what happened, bro. I'm like, what happened? What happened? What happened? Tell me what happened. Dude, we were doing her together. And her husband was watching. And he was cheering us on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like this. What? <laughs> what happened then? <laughs> yeah, I was, I'm like, what the fuck happened then? Tell me what happened right, then. Right. And it was like, how was your night? And I was like, it was cool. It was good. It wasn't like your night, but it was right. good. You know, right. but back to what I say, everything's supposed to happen for a reason. reason. Right. You know, even though that shit was wild to I me, mean, I had just been in, you know, out there for two weeks. I'm like, this is California? This shit wild. But wow. who knows what I kind of person I would have been, an animal I'd have been if I'd have done that. Not to say that there was anything wrong with that, but right. again, you know, certain things only happen. Heighten, right. you know, what you are. <laughs> Yo, somebody missed your wife. That's the right. point I'm making. Right. Yeah. Everything happens for, for a reason. reason. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So at this point, you're over the Cosby thing. Yeah. Just signed this uh, situation with uh, a pilot. Russell yeah. Simmons is behind it. What happens next? Um a period of time where it's like, now you're in a new spot. You're in a new, you know, you're, you're in a whole new world. You gotta navigate that. But I think everything I went through here prepared me to be able to move easily out there and to adapt really quick. Um, so it was a bunch of auditions. Just, I started working right away, doing stuff, 30 something, show called 30 something, Quantum Leap, all these different little shows like that was happening back then. And then um, you did quantum leap. Mm -hmm. Same word. Yeah, it's an episode called "A Single Drop of Rain." Yeah. Were you were, were you the person that he? The main person that I, I wasn't the person that he morphed into, but I was his. It was we were like, back in the day. Remember when he used to go town to town selling snake oil? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, yeah. We were we were two hustlers. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. So quantum leap was my shit back then. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so it went through a time period of that, and then um, and then I started doing uh, plays. Hmm. That was when Shelley Garrett first came out, and there was a cat out of um, Detroit called Mike Matthews, and he, you know, that's when I started doing plays, because that was my first love anyway. Growing up in New York, theater was all <laughs> I knew. That's how we was trained, Shakespeare, you know, we was, so all I ever wanted to do was Broadway. Never thought I would ever be on TV or doing anything. I just wanted to be on Broadway, which is next on my list. I was right. just about to say. Yeah, next on my list, right? So <clears throat> I remember meeting Martin, and then um, he had a um, screening of his special. He had just did a comedy special um, with HBO, and it was on Paramount's lot. Mm -hmm. And I remember meeting him, you know, briefly, like, you know, at the screening. Then I get a call from my agent like, yo, they're having auditions for this uh, this new comedy show. I was like, okay, what's it called? And it was like, it was called, it's called Martin. I was like, just one word? Like, it's Martin? <laughs> it's, it's just a, yeah. I was like, I was like, okay. Um, and they were like, yeah, some some comedian named Martin Lawrence. I was like, oh, 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 Dragon Breath from um, House Party. House Party. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. Because, right. yeah, that's what I remembered. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was like, all right, cool. And then... Um, and then I did it and um, went through that same process, you know? Tournament style. Uh-huh. Well, who did you originally, did you auditioned for Cole? Mm -mm. No. Tommy. Tommy. The names were different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the character's name was Tommy, but the character was the same. Right. Okay. If that makes sense, right? Right. And um, so once it happened, then Tommy got Tommy and I got Cole. But... I never forget when it happened because I went back out on the road and then my agent called me and was like, they need you back in California. I was like, why? And I had a cold moment. She goes, because they're having um, lunch with the cast. I was like, so why are you telling me? Because <laughs> you're in the cast, dummy. <laughs> <laughs> but you see now how I can bring things to it, right? Like I put stuff in it because I've like, had those moments. 
<laughs> I've had those moments. <laughs> Why are you telling me? <laughs> you know what? There's a car for you. Yeah. <laughs> Downstairs. That's dope. You get horny? <laughs> I, I, have a, I have a sort of a side question. Yeah. What's what's it like being like black? amazing? Who cool. amazing? I'm sorry. What was it? <laughs> what's it like being? I can answer that. <laughs> what's it like being part of, part in this? If it sound, kind of comes across wild, but like black famous <laughs> in in white Hollywood. Like you keep t- talking to us about meeting these people going yeah. cross country in the car. And yeah. they don't know that they're next to cockroach. No, they knew. Mm. They knew. Mm. Was in that kind of were they famous at all? No, or just you. Yeah, but they knew you. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't that make? Wouldn't that make some of these auditions easier for you to have this iconic role in this new show? To be able to. Not necessarily, no, because it doesn't. It doesn't. No, because. Perception is when you become known for something, that's what they see you as. Mm, pigeonhole in that one. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah. Perceptionally, even the casting directors and those people get stuck in that frame of mind because that's what they they know you for. Mm-hmm. Especially if it's big, if it blows, you know. Because I remember when we did the Cosby Show. Show. Um, that's when I first met Sam Jackson. Sam Jackson was Bill Cosby's stand-in. Hmm. Say word. Yeah, yeah. He was Bill Cosby standing, because every you, you, telling you everybody got a story where they start and how they get started, and, and that's when I even knew what a stand-in was. You know what I'm saying? That's basically when Bill couldn't do the scene, he would be standing in for Bill rehearsing with us as Bill. That's wild. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right. So, huh? Yeah, well, yeah, way. yeah. Basically, yeah. you know, it's not, it's we not like, stuff. it's not what you're filming. It's just rehearsal. Oh, okay, okay. It's just rehearsal. And so, what I realized too, as I grew, that everybody has one. We all have one, because back then we were in school. So when the kids had to go to school, if they needed to continue to rehearse mm-hmm. for camera blocking or whatever, they would just continue. Right. Bill got businesses he's running, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. So it would just continue. Mando. Yeah. Yeah. So, but what was your question? Black famous and white Hollywood. It always got me how Expound. we would have uh, somebody who was famous to us, somebody, a character that we loved. Mm-hmm. And then for whatever reason, that show goes away. Mm. And then you see them doing little parts in different shows, but they never got another big role I got right you. away. Okay, right. okay. So like I, what I was saying is, perceptionally, you get... Sometimes you get pigeonholed, especially for us, um, as you were just saying, right? Um, it takes a lot to shake that, mm. you know, because mm. it's it's just because you got to continue to prove, or somebody else have to give you that opportunity to show that you can pivot right you know i mean on paper if you had it saw on paper fresh prince gonna play muhammad ali you're like what yeah okay what you'd be like nah but mm-hmm. now we know now right. we really know now we really know had you yeah. you know you know what i'm saying and i got a million of those examples but that's the point. You got to work extra hard to make sure that these are all the faces. This is everything. Flipping it, right. you know? Which is why those little roles add up. You get to showcase Well, not, not just that. Not just that, but residually they add up. Okay, facts. Because it's just part of your journey. It's a part of everything, right? Like, you, you as an actor, you want to play many different roles. You want to have a body of work that says... I'm versatile. That, no, not just... You grow up thinking you can be anybody. That's how it starts. You're running around with a towel around your neck. Can't nobody tell you you ain't Superman. Mm. You think and believe you're Superman. Right. But then, now in the afternoon, maybe you're Tarzan. So that doesn't stop when it comes to these roles because it's just another part of like, oh, wow. 
would love to play this character. I'd love to dig my teeth into this. I'd love to, because because realistically, in one way or another, we all are superheroes, and we've seen superheroes in our parents, and so we can <coughs> relate those moments to what would be believable about that, or else why would I ever think that I could do this? Right. The gall, the audacity, right? To think, and to keep being told no. This business is like, you get 99 no's before you get one yes. Was there ever a no that you got that you were like, what? No, I'm never, no, no, because you leave it all out there. I mean, every, you know, if you really want something, of course, you're going to be like, damn, I really wanted this one. You know what I'm saying? What was the ones that you really wanted that you didn't get? He already thought of it. <laughs> he already thought already. of it. He already, yeah. <laughs> all of them. <laughs> all of them? Uh, nah, there's one in particular that you. Nah, nah. Um. At the time, it would bother me because, again, you want every one of them. Right. But later I would realize, oh, I wasn't supposed to be that. That wasn't supposed to be for me. So you was entitled over media, man? <laughs> <laughs> media, man. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. We wasn't even the same age at that time. <laughs> Damn, man. I, oh, you think I am? <laughs> oh, you we think were talking I am? superheroes. I just, I just nah. pulled out of the memory, bro. So, okay, you didn't get Bishop and Juice. Like, what, what are we, what are we talking? No, no, no. I, listen, I auditioned for all of these movies. I auditioned for that at the time. I auditioned for Juice. I auditioned for, you know. So yeah, I wanted all of them, but. You know, and I'm not mad. Look at what happened. These people are great in this movie. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I wasn't supposed to be there. That shit right. probably didn't fit. Right. You know? You have had iconic shows. Mm -hmm. There's no question about the roles you've been able to play and, like, the, the characters that you've had are forever ingrained in everybody's childhood and upbringing. Gat, when you when you first walked in, he was like, you're like everybody's cousin. <laughs> we all feel like we grew up with Cockroach. We all feel like we grew up with Cole. Mm. Day in, every Thursday night at this time, you sit there and you watch this show to the point where we didn't know, I speak for myself, I didn't know some of these blockbuster white shows were mm -hmm. on television. I never saw Friends till it went into syndication because right. it was in direct conflict yeah. to the lineup that yeah. Thursday night lineup it was that we messing all had with the lineup. Yeah, you, I didn't. I remember watching Seinfeld and feeling like, damn, they dropped, they jacked the whole Martin shit. Same shit. Yeah. Same wow. shit. They jacked the whole shit. I thought that way with friends when I saw a Living Single. I saw a Living Single first, so, and then I saw a friend. So y'all know like, why that happens, right? You do? Mm-hmm. Why? You, you know why that happens, right? Ratings? Tell me why. No, that. that no, no, that, he, yeah, he yeah, has right. a specific he, reason. No, no, I want to hear what y'all say. I think that um, what they call urban shows has an appeal to an urban audience, but it, the jokes themselves, the characters, the, it, it's still usable. It's still something that they can take. It's a formula that they can take and apply and, okay. and project it to say? another audience. Pretty much the same thing. White producers want the exact same, What they want the white version of the black show. So they recreate. Yeah. So so if you if you see New Edition, you go make New Kids on the Block because mm. you want to sell it to an audience that. Soldier Boy, I did it first. <laughs> basically, right. basically, yeah. yeah, yeah. The the direct the creator of. I don't know if y'all know this, but you can look it up if you want to. The creator of Friends, is on record saying he wish he came up with Living Single. He completely bit Living Single. Listen, it's a crazy game out yeah. there. Let me tell you that. It's a crazy game. And yeah, yeah, there's a lot of things that happen that gets repeated or bit or whatever. And, you know, it's not just in that um, industry. Musically, I mean, it's, you know, it is what it is, right? But then it becomes, then it becomes a, um, it becomes about the business side of it, right? So I remember back at back at that time, because we was helping build Fox's network. Mm -hmm. You have to remember, they didn't have nothing at Word. the time. Word. I didn't have married with children. 
-hmm. and then us, and then the Simpsons. And then they got the Super Bowl, right? Then they got football. But we helped build that network, you know what I'm saying? And at, during our time slot, they were paying hundreds of thousand dollars more per 30 second commercial spot than when Roseanne jumped on and other shows like that, you know, because everybody got to comp compete within the same time block, right? right? You know, and and then when you do the analytics, you go, oh, and then plus back then we was we was wild, we would say some wild shit, so they was like, <laughs> we might have to put them on at nine. You know, we, might have, we had to move them back a little bit. You know right. what I'm saying? Because because statistically or whatever numbers, you know, they were doing back then, kids would go to bed at this time or, you know, those. So mm -hmm. it was all of that. It was yeah. all of that. Those are, so, so I'm saying there's a lot of other reasons why things come in, things get put in, times get shifted, new nights, because they, now they're packaging you with something else they're trying to push and they need you to be the anchor on a night where ain't nothing else going on. Yeah, that happened a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but did you guys ever look at Seinfeld and be like, "Damn, wow, that's our show"? <laughs> it's crazy. Okay, <laughs> so let's let's go. For but yo, show. check it though. Right, check it. Every every show is that, right? Every sh every show is that, right? Flintstones mm -hmm. is is. The honeymoon, the honeymoon, right? Right. Like, hey, you know, then the Jetsons. Then it's um, yeah, and then and then it's I love Lucy, and then it's it's always the same, same formula. Yeah, but, but there's always an original. I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> it's always an original. Let me just say that it's always an original. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. You guys start rocking. From the first day on set, is it magic? Is it, yeah, yo, yeah, yo, this is, yeah, man, we this are. is it. Yep, absolutely, absolutely, one hundred. After we shot that pilot, during the pilot, we were laughing so goddamn hard, like we were all having so much fun and laughing. I mean, and the freedom to be able to like bring our own shit to it mm -hmm. and not be confined and stuck to what's on the paper and to watch him take what was on the paper and flip it and flip it. And then he, you know, it was like, oh, we about to wild out. We about to have some fun. Yeah. Cause now we feel we got a space where we can do that. Right. And after we watched the pilot, we was like, Oh yeah, this is this is it. this is this is going to be a good show. That's all we thought. It's going to be fun to come to work. This is going to be a great show that people ain't seen before. They ain't they ain't had nothing like this before. Mm -hmm. No, in our mind we're not thinking, oh, this is going to be crazy. This is going to be like the no. biggest show ever. iconic. No. Yeah. We was just going to work, having fun, and this was a good job. Make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like yo. It's like you being the only black guy on an all-white show talking about shit you don't know nothing about, <laughs> but you're acting. Mm -hmm. Versus, I'm with family. Oh, this is all we about to... You renege, nigga. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, before we crack into everything, we're going to take a five-minute break. But again, right. the whole deal is I don't have to. Right. You feel what I'm saying? Mm hmm Congratulations to you, by the way. Thank you, sir. Congratulations. Word, congrats to you, bro. Thank you. Man, Papa, nigga. Like, for real. Thank you. For real. My for the like, thing. Congratulations to like, you, Like, when bro. I be scrolling or, like, sometimes different things come up, you, you have a lot of great interviews. Thank you, bro. You give, pause, great <laughs> interviews. <laughs> <laughs> you do, you have. Thank yeah, you, no, no, for real, for real. So I, I like what you guys have accomplished here, man. I mean, it's, it's big ups to y'all, big ups. Thank you, Thank you. We're, we're, ah. trying to be, we're trying to be like you when we grow up. Nah, man. I mean, that's just one of the reasons why I came. Because, like, I respect what y'all do and I respect how y'all do it. And y'all have some great conversations, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all have good conversations. I'm like, all right, look at these brothers. Look at these brothers. <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up.
I, I thought <laughs> you came man, to just some music soul child of here. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> and we're back. <laughs> that took no time at all. All right. Martin. Now it's time to dig it. Like yeah, this. Of course. <laughs> you know, <laughs> right out the gate, bro. Iconic. So it was a layup, and then. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you dumped it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Everybody back away slow. Come on, back away, man. Back yeah. Go ahead, Mav. Go ahead, Mav. Get to it, bro. <laughs> Yo, I just had a picture of this thing. <laughs> Running up on people like the police. Pause! This nigga just walking around the hall and just waiting on me. Pause, son! Pause, no! <laughs> Hey, yo. Hey, yo. <laughs> that was crazy. <laughs> yo. Crazy. Because <laughs> I like, He made a middle of a conversation. Pause. Hold on, excuse me for a second. Ah. <laughs> uh. Oh shit! <laughs> I, we gonna make, that's gonna be the movie. That's gonna be the movie. Yeah, I get. We <laughs> know you. And, it, and it's it's only right that that's the vibe when we think about this show. Yeah. Iconic. I'm. I'm. I mean, like, years after the the final season, I'm Decades still pulling after. up to chicks' cribs like, yo, let's watch Martin. Netflix and chill was wow. Martin. It was, wow. like, yeah, it was, it was crazy. Martin. Let's, you know what I mean? It's crazy, yo. Bro, like, and you it's watch such a great show. Over and over show. and don't get I, bored. You watch it over and over and over and never get tired. You never you get bored. You've seen them episodes a million times. A million times. times. But still you, funny. But you yeah. know what you, like, like, the best episodes are the episodes where... We can catch y'all laughing. Right. When, okay, Yo, like Martin yeah. going around the table with, with the, the dog. Wallet. That one. Bro, I I'm saw everyone you. fighting, like, because y'all don't trying understand. Trying to keep it together. <laughs> y'all don't understand what was supposed to happen, right? A lot of, a lot of the times we did them shows. Improv? No. Well, not just, it's not about improv. Yeah, yes. So, a yes to answer your question, right? Because we just liked having fun hmm. on this particular day, right? We were supposed to have a real dog. Oh. We were supposed to have a real <laughs> dog. And I don't know if something happened with the dog. He got sick. He wasn't trained right. I don't know what happened, but we was rehearsing. They had the dog trainer come through and rehearsal. Like, we were supposed to have a dog. Right. <laughs> and Tim and Ray, who was in charge of props, as a joke, they sat that damn Rottweiler there. And Martin was like, keep it, leave it. We didn't know though. So we was laughing, like looking like, oh shit, this guy's stupid. And then they started petting it like this in the back of his hand. I was like, oh, okay, okay, some shit is happening. This is happening. Oh, this right. is about, this is about, and I'm thinking like, this can't be, we can't keep this take, cause mm -hmm. this ain't gonna work, cause we can't keep it together right now. Then he started dragging this motherfucker <laughs> around the room. We was like, oh, God. I was like, oh, I hate him. Because we purposely would try to make each other laugh. Who could top who, right? Right. At this time, he killing us right now. He got the dog. He arr, 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 on the table. <laughs> Tommy was the worst. Tommy could never <laughs> keep it together. It didn't matter what was going on. And you could hear Tommy. Woo! <laughs> 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 That's a Tommy laugh. Even yeah. when we, when you see other scenes, but you hear how he in the scene, but you because because of the way we do it, we watching scenes. We didn't want to go to our room. We watching when he's doing a different character and all of this. We over there laughing. I'm trying to keep it together. I'm trying to keep it together. When he goes. When bruh man finally comes in, mm -hmm. and he goes across the room, hops over the dog, and barks as he's hopping over, as if the dog barked at him, <laughs> and told the dog to stay. <laughs> and the dog is already on the ground. And I was like, this is some genius shit right here. I'm dying. I can't take it. I can't take it. Yo, we but all laughed at that. That's, that's the, but honestly, that's how we were. Right, mm -hmm. it was a party. We were having fun, and we would sharpen steel with each other. Like, we would constantly try to make each other laugh. Like, I was, I started putting bloopers on there this week on my Instagram, cause I'm, I'm like, people got to know and see how much fun we had, and all the different shit we used to do behind the scenes, and how we used yeah. to just rock out, right? Yeah. Like, and so I'm, if you look at the episode where, um, 
Martin wanted us to be grandparent, god godparents mm -hmm. to his uh, his unborn child or whatever. Right. And I was being Don Corleone. <laughs> he couldn't take it. Watch that. Watch that episode. He'd be like, he was trying to turn his head. <laughs> Looking like he had sneeze. He couldn't take it. No, he couldn't take it. Cause and I was, you know, we was doing it to each other on purpose. Like this one time he was like, uh, hey Cole, remind me to whoop your ass later. Mm -hmm. And then it was supposed to be another line after that. I was like, all right, what time is good for you? And he was like, ah, ha. ah. About such, such, such. I was like, ah, I'm busy. <laughs> and I was like, five minutes later? He said, yeah. I was like, all right, cool. And then we go on with the scene, but none of that being the script. Mm. That's just us playing around and wilding out, you know? That's dope. Yeah. What, what would you say your top five episodes? Top five episodes? Um, I have different ones for different reasons. Like, a lot of people would be like, what? Love Boat. Love Boat was one of my favorite episodes because I grew up watching The Love Boat. Mm -hmm. And even though I had already worked with a lot of these other people that I grew up watching, you know, like Dolomite, come on, man, Dolomite, Outkast, Biggie, Snoop, you know, uh, Janae Dubois, you know, I met mm -hmm. all these, but that was one of them shows like Happy Days. That's what we used to watch. That's what we grew up watching. And, you know, mm -hmm. now they on the show with us. And so I enjoyed that show. Uh, the Little People episode, that was wild. That was funny. Bro. He was fighting. He was fighting the little people. <laughs> that was that was kind of wild. That was my <laughs> episode. That shit was hilarious. Because I was like the first time I had did a stunt on camera. Like he bust a bottle on my head. Like you know what I mean? But he was like, ah. Yeah. And, and that was the first episode. He was like, he was like, yo, let's wild out. He was like, let's just wild out. I was like, what? He's like, you niggas just you know, let's have some fun. Fuck it. I was like, bet. And that's when you start seeing cold kind of. I mean, you know. And then Tommy getting on his knees to fight. I'm like, it's, it that's how you got your ass knocked out the first time. Yeah, it was a wild, it was a wild <laughs> ass episode. Shit. Plus, plus Bushwick was wild. This yeah. nigga was having little people parties in his trailer. Rest in peace. Uh, is he, was, he, was, he was having, all you saw was a bunch of thick ass little, you know. <laughs> God, God. Uh, yeah, the whole trailer was doing this shit. <laughs> Bushwick was a little, right, you know, no, yeah, yeah, he had no, a little, you know. No, yeah, ACP, no. ACP, close the door, you letting the smoke out. I'm like, all right, Bill. Hey, hey. <laughs> no, you you got to see him try to get down off them stairs, though, because you know the trailer is oh. like. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. I was like, you need some help? I got you. <laughs> the little people are heavy as shit. I don't know if you know. They solid. Yo, they like, like, <laughs> they like, like, yo, come on, come on, come on. You can't say that. Yeah. They like a bowling ball to a four year old. Like, yeah, I'm telling you, yo. <laughs> they're heavy, yo. <laughs> I was like, I got you. Oh, shit. No, no. No, no, I got you. I don't have you. Yo, hilarious, man. Yo, whose idea? Why all the little people got thick asses, though? Where did y'all get that? <laughs> nope, nope. I was nope. just no. I was saying little people nope. and, and 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 those classrooms that were on the outside of the building. Nope, nope. <laughs> you know nope, what? Nope. Can adults? Can adults? Can adults? Can adults? You know. Listen, I did this on the show one had, time, and I got letters. Oh, for real? Yeah, yeah. Oh wow! And um, I well, ran we'll into, all I ran into one of the guys that was writing me. <laughs> 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 So what if you did this? No, I was... <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna write me about this shit. Well, what if you did like this? They're definitely gonna write me. Oh, come on! <laughs> Stop, it's not funny. All right, no, no, no. It's not funny. First of all, we're not, Dave said it was okay. But we're not, we're not making fun, we're not doing that. That's right. not what we're doing. Right. I'm just oh, trying to shit. understand the logic of it oh, all. Oh, man. And I'm not, I'm not lying when I say... Oh, shit. The truth is the truth. You know it's the truth. Who designed the truth? Who designed the rat? It's the truth. Who designed the rat? <laughs> Chilligan's Island. I don't know. I wasn't. I wasn't. I wasn't there for that one. I was like, because you know, sometimes when you ain't in certain scenes and shit, yeah, he wasn't right. in that. And like, honestly, I, there's a lot of episodes I didn't see. Mm. A lot. There's a lot of episodes. Oh, uh, I, I couldn't. Well, because you don't know the story. Because you don't know the story behind that. That would okay. Here's another story, real quick. 
So Martin um, was doing Dragonfly, and you know, he goes all out. He gives his all. And they had put these things in his nose, these little like cones, to make his nostrils flare. Because you know, you know, if you have seen it, his nostrils are flare. Mm -hmm. right. And then um, they do stuff to his teeth, make it look like he ain't got no teeth. He goes through a lot of makeup, gives it his all. He gets winded, right? Because each take he's going for it. And his boy was a professional boxer for real. And that was his real friend in real life. And I think he caught him at one. And when he fell to the ground, he went like that. And them things got lodged up in here, <gasps> right? Wow. And now he's on the ground like, <laughs> and he's trying to get the shit out. But he's doing dragonfly shit. <laughs> Silence. You understand what I'm saying? Right. He's yeah. like, <laughs> and he's rolling around on the ground trying to get this shit out. And everybody think it's part of what he's doing. <laughs> I'm the only nigga that knows this nigga dying. <laughs> right? So I'm like, y'all don't see this? Next thing you know, they're like, cut, cut, cut. And then they rush over and they start helping him. It's too late though. I'm I'm here. <gasps> I'm laughing now. Cause cause no, I'm not laughing at what happened. Is the is the no one saw this nigga dying? Die. He was. <laughs> 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 and they were just loving it, laughing, right. thinking. He got mad, cause back then we used to, we used to do crazy shit. We used to slap food out. You can have a, a fresh plate of food. Watch your back. Mm. Of snatchies and snatchies, nah. No, no. 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 Ah, you don't want that. <laughs> Smack it all the way down the stage. Cow! You don't want that. Get out of here. <laughs> right? Oh, we, play, we played the dumb. I'm trying to tell you this is how we used to live. On a daily. Food everywhere. Go bow and pull with it. Hello! <laughs> and you can't get mad. That was our rule. You can't get mad. He was mad. He was on the floor. Couldn't get that shit out. He was and the, the matter he got. The funnier it got to me, because I was like, I knew what was going on. And we didn't have time. So they were like, we need to go again right away. I was like, oh, no, 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 I'm not ready. Like, we can't go right now. We can't go right now. Please give me a second. I was like, Carl, we don't have time. We got to go. I was like, OK. <laughs> so when he started doing it again, all I could picture was what had just happened. And what was about to happen. So I was like, oh. <laughs> so that's what you see. You seeing me going through it. At that time, I was going through it. And and we all were, because it was something we laughed about after the fact, but we had to go. We couldn't stop. It was like, no, we gotta do it again. We gotta go right away. And I was like, oh God, we ain't got it out of us yet. We not done. Mm. And then he started doing it again. So now you don't look at it the same, right? No. The hike hike turns up. <laughs> <laughs> Silence. That's crazy. Yeah. What was your favorite moments on Martin? Ah, favorite, definitely the, the the rat episode. That thing with the, the eyes. Martin was fighting this shit. Chilligan's Island. Chilligan's yeah. Chilli Island. That's crazy, yeah. bro. Uh -huh. Yeah, we had a good time. We had a good time, man. We had, we had a lot of fun. But your top five? <sighs> five. Uh, Biggie. Biggie. Definitely one of my. Biggie, tops. Biggie, Biggie. Give me one more chance. Helmio. <laughs> uh, um, I would have to think even harder, but it was really about the experiences and the people that I got to meet. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, Outkast. I was a huge Outkast fan, so when they came out, it was Jodeci. Uh, oh, the Jodeci Chasey, JoJo, Vonnell Hill. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Snoop. You know, um, Meth the Man came through. Meth came through. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, that was great. That was we a dope episode. We, we, had, we, had the we had the original. We had the original um, Olympians, the, the the female basketball mm -hmm. team mm -hmm. swoops. Before you know, we knew all of these cats, man. Like we, that's how that came about. We played them too, and they whooped our ass. Yep. I know we played for real, for real at Martin's house, and I remember because uh, swoops and I had the same size sneakers at that time. And uh, yeah, I mean, this is, this is, this is, don't don't judge me. <laughs> but she was like, "Nah, you can wear mine." And I was like trying to explain to them the significance of what they were accomplishing at the time by being females. I'm like, "Yo, you the first. You, this your shoe with your name on it. Like, you do understand that? That's right. big, mm -hmm. right?" And she was like, "Yeah, shut up, little man." I'm like, right. <laughs> you know. And they was just shooting from way anywhere, and it was like Steph Curry shit. And I was just like, "Yo, somebody put a hand in her face, please. Like, can y'all stop this, please?" Yeah, that shit was real. 
That shit was real. We got we we treated them differently after that. We was wow. body checking them the whole nine. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, it was just one. Jackie Chan, come on, man. Oh you know, yeah. We grew up watching kung fu flicks. Right. Him just coming through for two seconds and saying Shanene got the ill nana was the craziest <laughs> shit. Ever. I heard she has that ill, ill nana. nana. <laughs> and the the people who were um, standards and practices, right? They didn't know what that meant, and we would lie and say other shit just so we could get away with it. Really? They knew <laughs> certain things, like we literally got away with club shiznit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. come yeah. on, yeah. man. Yeah, we was enjoying getting it. And the crazy shit is, Tommy never knew anything because he was raised church boy. Mm. So oh. slang and different it would right over. And in the script, he would always say, "Carl, what is this? What does this mean?" And I would have to explain it to him too. Or tell him, or he, because he would just say it and be like, yeah, I'm saying it right? I'm like, yeah, you got it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who came up with the character um, Big Shirley? Um, that was, uh, you know, Martin and I had a conversation about stuff. We would talk all the time about the different characters coming through. Um, Big Shirley was a combination of influences, you know. Um, he was on. Um, What's Happening Now, I think it was called, or something, I forget the episode, with Shirley Hemphill. And, um, you know, I guess she was pivotal in his life in some sort of way, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, I had a sister named Shirley, you know, so we would have conversations about the different females that were pivotal in our lives, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And there you go. Big Shirley. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was there ever an episode where we got where, where people got to see her or going to her. Yeah, yeah, you know what they they, they, they slipped up. They showed her one time, but it was she almost was like it was almost outfit. it was almost like she got bigger though. Because you saw her that one time, right. yeah. and then you show, her head didn't fit on the screen after that. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like she kept growing. Yeah, the right. first time they showed Big Shirley, she yeah. had a security guard outfit. He was yeah. walking mm-hmm. arm in arm. <laughs> and then we she, see, she got kids my age. Child and then after that, um, she was at the uh, ball. Yeah. Where she had the big ass fingers and I was eating the food. Yeah, yeah. That was hilarious. She dropped the hot wing, yeah. Now we had a good time, man. It was a good time. It was a good time, man. So, what was it like when it ended? What? Wait, wait, wait. Before we even ask that, in your opinion, Hmm. why did it end? What was the recipe to 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 the end of this iconic show? Um. I would say, because there's been rumors, <laughs> Martin and Gina, they had a secret affair. And... I'm not addressing any of that. Right. Um, but the, I'm not, I'm not addressing it because I don't know. Right. Mm-hmm. As well, like, you know, so can't talk about nothing I don't know about. Um, it was time. It was time when... When the team ain't playing like a team, somebody got to get traded. Hmm. Right. Somebody got to get traded. And you saw what happened to the mom on the Fresh Prince. Right. They they went from chocolate to nougat in the heartbeat. <laughs> <laughs> Niggas just kept quick. moving like, like they ain't see that. Okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yes. So yeah, when the team ain't playing like a team, and in, and not just and that's infectious. Like, but it starts either from the top down or vice versa and when nothing is moving it's like something got to happen it, it's, it's just a powder keg hmm. well we yeah. noticed the change you know after a while like like the cosby show theme music it went from straight up hip-hop to jazzy to the 3d martin and all that was that was that part of the network's way of lightning the show, like kind of, kind of bleaching I would the not show know. just a little bit. Honestly, I didn't think about it. I didn't think about it. I don't, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. Um, you know, they, they always do these tests and what resonates and all of that type of stuff, like you said. And you know, maybe they thought they were being, who knows? Hmm. You know, I don't know what demographic they were playing to. Maybe they just thought, you know, this was a new look. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I have no idea. It was talks of the reunion. Is that still gonna happen? Nah. No, they said they weren't gonna do it. Yeah, not at all. Sorry, yeah. I mean the answer. That. Yeah, nah, nah, nah. Um, no, it, it, timing is everything. You know, we're right. supposed to do stuff when you're supposed to do it. 
Otherwise, you missed the ship, you missed the boat. Wouldn't be the same without Tommy. Um, you know, there was a time we could have did it, and there was a, there's you know there's there's still things that we could possibly do that could be for both generations to tie to tie them together, but never redo the same thing that the, the lightning you caught. Mm -hmm. Never, you don't never redo that. Right. Was there ever talks of a spinoff? They had one. They had one for Tashina. They had one for Tashina. Remember, she worked at the record label. Yeah, she was like an A and R. But they made it, they made it a part of our. She discovered Tyrese. No, no, no. Before that, she discovered Tyrese yeah. on the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so listen, whole... they just made it part of one of our episodes. That's mm -hmm. what happened. Right. Right. It was supposed to be a spin. Yeah. I was waiting for the Cole spinoff. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> um, you know, nobody was thinking like that back then, to be honest. Because again, it was, it was a uh, um, the atmosphere <laughs> was what it was. You know, you could see the writing on the wall, so to speak. What was the writing on the wall? Again, nobody was playing. The team wasn't playing like a team. What caused the team to start to fall apart? Ball handling pause. <laughs> Ball handling. <laughs> <laughs> that was on point. She not. <laughs> on point I'm ball. trying. <laughs> Who, who was handling the ball, man? <laughs> who's pause, who's handling pause. the ball, man? Pause, you got pause, it. Yo, come man, on, it's, man. it's only a pause if it wasn't a female. <laughs> who's handling the ball? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm just saying, man. Um, nothing, you know, it's, it's, again, atmosphere, energy, all of that's infectious, right? And I think towards the end it was like let's just get to 100 episodes so we're in syndication i think that was their mindset you know because they they the, and when i say they i mean the, the people at the top i feel like they knew it was turmoil in the camp or just you know that things weren't gelling with folks you know and i believe they ignored it because they mm. just wanted to get to 100 episodes yeah like <laughs> we almost there y'all we almost there so right. That was my belief at the time, you know, looking back, looking back because, you know, again, you can see and feel the energy in the air and things are starting to change and things are being handled, people are being different and it's all of that and it's like, oh, okay. When it got to the point where uh, Tisha was no longer in the show, mm. was there any questions asked? Was there, was it like, yo, what's... Again, I don't, I don't speak on that kind of stuff, man. Right. I don't I don't speak on it because it ain't got nothing to do with me. You know, I mean, I get why you asking, but um, it's like a it's like a fucking mystery. Man. I know, I know it is, I know it is, and that's the best part about it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. That is the best oh. part about it because now you can bring them on. And ask them about it, and then people for years will still be talking about it. Okay, uh, so Martin, he, he said you're coming on the show to I talk about it. That's, yeah, what he that's, 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 that's what he just said. That's what he just said. He got the It's not what I said. He got the Because you know why? To China, he said you coming on it's the like show this. to talk about it. It's like this. We only speak on today. You know, I get everybody want to know these things and certain things about what happened yesterday and all of that. <laughs> I'm focused on tomorrow. I'm focused on today and tomorrow. I completely understand that. I totally respect that. Here's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> you fucked around and did something so great that it meant a lot to the people who were watching. Yeah. Right. And when it gets snatched away from us mm -hmm. in that way, right. people feel robbed. Yeah. Mm. And you want wow. you want a hold, let me just get hold this out. Hold you hold want out, a out, good explanation as to why right not only this thing was so dope mm -hmm. i got you but see i was in the car i didn't know he was gonna rob the bank <laughs> i was just a passenger <laughs> in the car. Yeah. i was in the car right i didn't know what that was gonna happen mm. so i can't speak for what the mindset was or who did what and why right okay I, all right I, matter of fact i didn't even see it i just seen you come out the building <laughs> Yeah. I just seen you come out the building. Yeah, except people ask questions after yeah, you the car stop. You could do a crime with this one. You could do a crime with this one. The, the car stop, you yeah, turn I around. See nothing. Nigga, what the fuck did you just do? <laughs> or, 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 you'd be like, 
That's what's up. I <laughs> right. 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 All right. I understand you can't talk about certain things. Can you give advice to all the other people who are aspiring actors who might find themselves in a similar similar situation on what not to do? So everything that happened back then, whatever it was, that's all I saw was what, when it's my turn, what I need to be, what I need to do. So if you are in a position or a situation, you know, because I'm not saying anything other than if you're ever in a, any position, anybody in any position in life, anywhere where they don't feel comfortable, then you must act. You must do something about it. Be I take, I te- I te- it. Yeah, I teach my sons this. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Which goes back to the bullying or whatever else, right? If you're ever in a position or a situation that you don't feel comfortable, it's like you, you've been there before too. You've been in that situation. I know you have. Mm-hmm. Where, let's say you was out with somebody and let's say her breath stink or something, right? Instead of you just being like, yo, somebody with, with shitty tap shoes or was on your tongue, you'll be <laughs> like, you'll avoid the uncomfortableness. You'll avoid it to be able to keep going. You'll just be like, ah, she just needs some gum. You put one in your mouth and handle one because you think that's going to solve the problem. But I think, you know, we've learned nowadays, if anything, you got to step forward. You got to say something. You got to confront the issue head on and demand respect and demand that part of your relationship or whatever it is, your friendship or whatever, your business, whatever it is, if you let something fester, you keep picking at it. You never let it heal. You keep picking at it. Or you just don't put it on. It's going. So that's what I would say to anybody. If you, in any situation, anywhere in life, the train station, in, grocery store, you don't feel comfortable, somebody making you feel uncomfortable, handle it. Handle it, you know. And I don't necessarily mean aggressively. I don't mean, I mean, make a decision to have a solution to deal with it. I understand people process things differently and it takes time and this, that, and the other, right? But then the first question you should ask yourself is, why do you feel that way? Why do you, you feel uneasy about something? Because mm-hmm. otherwise, that's not a normal feeling, right? Right. What's causing that? What's causing that feeling? How long you going? Yeah. Go through the motions without speaking up. Right, or whatever the case may be. But sometimes people feel powerless. Sometimes people are, you know, in positions where they don't feel like they have that power. Do the lines ever get blurred playing these roles? In terms of what? In terms of uh, you might have a certain relationship on camera, but it's not a relationship that you have off camera. Be more specific. Um, You're playing best friends with Mm. someone. Yeah, okay. And then... The director yells, cut. And you're not really best friends. That's your best friend. And you still think they're your best friend. Why? Because (laughs) the lines are getting blurred. Oh, no, not for me. Not for you. Not for me, no. I mean, I'm sure it's happened to people before because, you know, you see people have relationships and things happen, right? People work together and, and, you know, it's a chemistry thing. Um, No, I, I learned a long time ago that, you know, if you just develop or have a special relate, if you develop a, a friendship, you know, something that surpasses, you know, like what me and Tommy had, that surpasses that, that's like, that's, that's gold, right? Because then you, you know, you have somebody that you're actually working with that you genuinely have a, a connection to and a bond with, you know, but typically you got to look at it like, it's just a job, you know. These are these are people that I work with, and and it's easy to become in a family atmosphere. It's easy to fall into that, into that false sense because I call it insular. You know, it's like everybody playing in the bubble. Mm. 
right? You're in the bubble. So now these cats, you, you develop these relationships that you would never normally have. It's not organic. Mm-hmm. It's a forced situation. situation. Mm-hmm. Circumstantial. Right. Right. And yeah, your character can then be, you know, but if this person is a, then you're going to be like, see you tomorrow. Mm-hmm. You know, or you develop these skills to be able to keep everything or whatever the case may be. But yeah, people, but people have blurred the lines, of course, because, you know. But that's not a problem for you. Mm-mm. Back back to what you said earlier from his other question. Because it seems like this has happened twice to you, what you're mentioning. Mm. Um, well, I blurred the lines? No, 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 not that part. As far as, no, I'm talking about uh, speaking up when something's uncomfortable. Saying something, mm. getting ahead of it. This, you just mm. mentioned that for the mm-hmm. second time. Because right. if somebody had spoken up, when Bill was when Bill was making you uncomfortable mm-hmm. on the set of the Cosby Show. Yeah, but you got to understand too. You got it's how you do it and how you go about doing it, right? How you go about doing something and speaking up because that's important too. Well, I'm not questioning the how. Oh, okay. okay, I'm not questioning the how. I'm okay. questioning the action in itself. Okay, had somebody done it at this specific time, right? Maybe Cockroach would have saw some more light. Had somebody done it on the set of Martin, maybe we wouldn't have. Maybe we wouldn't have got gotten past. We would have got to episodes. the hundreds, right? <clears throat> um, with regards to, to Cosby, as I said earlier, um, it had to happen. Because mm-hmm. you had to learn. You had to get the lesson out of it and it become had, who you are now. It had to happen. Right. Same thing with Martin, watching it happen and again, again to an extent, a different way. A different way, but there was still a situation where someone could have gotten ahead of it. Someone could have I don't know. Up. I don't know. Different ages, too. Right. Well, I don't, yeah, but no, I, no, no. I'm just keeping it 100. Yeah. I don't know. I know. I, I, I know what I know, mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. and and there's things that I don't know. Mm-hmm. You right. said it. You said it's. You said it stung when you realized you weren't being called back for Cosby. Mm-hmm. Was it the same kind of feeling when Martin was winding down, or when you you see the you're seeing the writing on the, the wall, wall, and you see that this this great thing is coming <sighs> to an end? Yeah. Yeah, it did. Yeah, it was. It was a little bit of that too, of course, because it was like, man, because again, yeah, you, you there was that family atmosphere that was, you know, wow. it felt it felt like a death. Mm-hmm. It felt like a death. Yeah, mm. it felt like a death because it was the end of something. Right, right. That was great. You know, it was the end of something. Um, you know, the checks was pretty good. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, 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 what were the checks like? <laughs> <laughs> just, just. Wild reruns all day. Um, yeah. What time is it? <laughs> <laughs> Martin was on how many networks, though? No, I mean, at, at the peak of the show, what was the value? What was the value of commercial time <laughs> during um, during your breaks? What, what was the numbers like? It was it was uh, it was it was Super Bowl numbers. We were doing Super Bowl numbers like wow. at our peak, at least for that at least for that time too. Mm-hmm. They were um, battling those kind of numbers. Um, we're talking we're talking millions. I'm talking yeah per per half per half thirty second spot versus a a minute or two minute spot. Yeah, millions. Yeah, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars for sure. And then at, the, at its height, it definitely was was up there in terms of ad sponsorship dollars for sure. Wow. For sure. And it was on different channels. You had nine, it was on BT. No, no, that but that's different. That's, that's after. after. That's after. after? Yeah. That's after. Yeah. That's He's after. talking about it in real time. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah that's, that's after. Short, um yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it was yeah. Okay. It was okay. Good. Okay. It was good. All right. So don't hurt nobody, Mac. Chill yeah, out. Yeah, Mac. Chill out. Don't hurt Chill nobody. Out. He's about to do some kung fu. No, he's, he's everybody yeah. won kung fu fighting. <laughs> <laughs> There is, Cat Williams brought a lot of things to the surface as far as how Hollywood gets down. Right. Um, Not sure how much, I'm not saying what's true and what's false. However, we look at you, someone who's obviously talented, fantastic resume, didn't get your own show. Which we all, I, I can't think of anybody who wouldn't have wanted to see right. Cole do his own thing, Cockroach do his own thing, you've transitioned well in the comedy, your stand-up <clears throat> game is... Right. The, all these factors, all, all this experience you've done with other shows, mm-hmm. all these things say that 
there's no reason that guy that we remember from all these other things shouldn't be doing his own thing on a network, on cable, with all these other options. Right. And Cat Williams talked about a lot of reasons why that doesn't happen for qualified people, very qualified mm-hmm. people. Why aren't, is there any truth to any of that as far as your specific situation is concerned? And I know everything no. happens when it's supposed to. I got you. I got I you. Right. I, got that, you. I ain't but... going to say that again because it's true, but um, no, 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 no. Um, no truth to it as far as my situation is concerned at all. Um, I'm currently about to have that situation. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You heard it here nice, first. Nice, nice. Yeah, 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 nice, yeah. Nice. yeah, yeah. No, that that situation is is currently happening. You know right. what I'm saying? And, Overdue. And I appreciate that, but I again, I always go back to my journey. Like I had to be at a space where it's like now it's your turn. Cause now you got all the tools, you got everything you need. You've, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's it's like you learn what to do, what not to do. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. You know, you're what I'm ready saying? now. You seasoned. You got it. Mm-hmm. It's part. It's part of whatever it's supposed to be for me. Because again, I always look at like I always look back at like when we was growing up and all the dumb shit we used to do. Mm-hmm. Like we didn't think about it then as dumb, right? When we would literally jump on the train in the middle of the car hmm. yeah. while it was moving. Yeah. Right. And jump off, like, or ride on the back of a bus. You know, you know like, we crazy shit we used right. to do, not thinking all the different times in the situations we'd have been in. We, we could have not been here. Right, mm-hmm. true. You know, there's purpose. There's reason in all of that. There's reason in all of that. Like, I mean, I have to keep saying it, but there's reason behind it, right? That didn't happen to you. That did. That didn't happen to you. That did. Oh, you got it? You got it now? You got it? Mm. All right, here you go. And now we're at the here you go phase. Here you go. Right. It well, just it, here you again. Go. I think it's inten- It's you got to be intentional, right? To answer your question, <laughs> it's about being intentional, and it's a team thing. It's a team thing because you know it's just like anything else, right? When you go to a club, can you get in? You can pay to get in, mm-hmm. maybe. If they don't want to let you in, they're not going to let you in. Somebody said something recently that made a lot of sense, and I think this will cap it off. I saw an interview. I forget where I saw it. Right. Not to take anything away from Jackie Robinson for being one of the greatest, right? This was said, and I just want you to think about this for a second. Hopefully I'm going to repeat it right. People often talk about what Jackie did, but it was really what they allowed. Hmm. He was the first because they said, okay. Mm-hmm. Right, because it was theirs. Make right. sense what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah, can, like think about what I'm saying. Like definitely. everybody, you know. And again, not to take it away, but it's a perspective. It's a thought. It's a thing. When it's like, yo, the first, he was the first. He broke down the barriers. He opened the floodgates. Okay. Well, we we gotta, get, we gotta <laughs> you understand get, what I'm saying? Yeah, it's, he broke well, we, down the barriers versus we still have somebody give, opened. The we still door have to give some of that credit to his talent. Really, I said I'm not taking nothing it's away. Yeah. I'm, not, I'm not taking over nothing away from his talent at all, of course, because they, we all they, they can't stop that in us. Mm-hmm. We right. all have that. Right. There's a million of them. Then he was the one. They let and allowed because it was theirs to say no to. But it was about money and it was about other things that made it. So I think right. I think Kat's talk was I, the I know. fact that what it takes to be chosen. What it takes to be Yeah, I, I get what you're saying. I get what you're saying on that. And that's his perspective. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's that's his and that's maybe I'm of the mind I'm of the mindset of believing and knowing what you are and who you are Mm -hmm. and what you want to happen and manifest in how you see your life being. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's like, does this exist? Maybe. But if I'm not giving it no energy, I don't fucking know. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? If I'm not giving it no, you know, yo, man, you believe in ghosts? Yeah, okay. You know what I'm saying? I do, but 
or do I believe? Yeah. But if you tell me that this place is haunted or, you know, whatever, I'm not going to stay here. <laughs> right. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to be like, they do. I'm like, yeah, I, 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 can, I can believe it without knowing it. Like, I'm good. <laughs> right, 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 I'm good. Right, right. So you know in, in all your years of, of being in Hollywood, have you ever seen anything peculiar, anything that was like, whoa, what the? That's Hollywood every day. All that shit is peculiar. What are you talking about? No, I mean like anything that that's like, nah, this shit is, it's some satanic shit going on over here. I mean, you get feelings. You know what I'm saying? You can feel energy like that. If you in tune, if you in tune to most high, if you in tune in general, you know the vibe. I done been in rooms. I done been in rooms, empty rooms, where I'm like, yeah, I'm not staying here. Because it's, it's like that. Something's wrong. Yeah, it's like that. It's like that. Even when a, when a person touch you and, and shake your hand and you feel that. Right. You can feel energy. You know what's yeah. up. You know where people are coming from. Right. But you got to be in tune with that. Mm-hmm. Or Because if you're not, Next thing you know, you in the car like, where we going? <laughs> <laughs> Shh, don't worry about it. I'm gonna rob the bank. Put this blanket over. You here. know, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Where the? Where well, these I, I saw an interview where um, after the show ended, you and Martin didn't speak for for a little while. Mm. Um, when you finally got to have that conversation, mm-hmm. what was it like? Um. It was um, it was a, a grown conversation where you know again when you move past things and you 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 move past them, you know what I'm saying you you grow, and then you have a conversation where it's like things get recognized and you know you because I'm when you at peace you at peace, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying right there's nothing holding stopping that so and and it's just about realizing where you are and who you are you got to remember who you are at all times sometimes things happen to make you forget but what's your peace is your peace and once you make a decision to not let things disturb that in any way shape or form it'll be tested but you know it'll get tested but no I was in a different headspace. He was. In, everybody was in a different headspace. Everybody was doing different things. So much of life has happened. Kids, grandkids. I could care less about whatever, right. you know, because I've been blessed so much since then. And it didn't, you know, it was a part of the journey. It's part of the argument we got in here when we first started discussing Cat Williams and all that stuff. Martin put on several dresses. But nobody felt it was a part of an agenda when he did it. Mm-hmm. When he was dressing like Shanae, when he was dressing like Big Mama, nobody was right. running around saying, "Oh, he's demasculating it." I think somebody said something once that made sense. It's like if, if, if something happened once or it got out that this was the reason that it was happening, now you attach it to everything else, right. or you put a you you dress it up, right? You put a blanket <laughs> on it. You start connecting the dots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and 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 it's not to say that some of these things don't, but it doesn't mean that that applies. Or that, that's what that situation was? No. When you grow up, again, thinking and pretending to be any and everybody, you that's you did that too. You know what I'm saying? My great-grandmother was one of my hugest influences. I do her in my stand-up. You know what I'm saying? I talk about the different strong black women that we've had in our lives. Who do you think these characters are built after? Mm-hmm. These are the, these are the, these, so now we're imitating them. Right. It's not about Hollywood making us do something that we don't... I mean, now, again, not to say that that hasn't happened to somebody. Right. I don't know, but it's not a general thing. Right. Now, somebody might look at this lady and be like, he don't know because he's not at that level. Or, okay. I, 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 think, I think the biggest part of it is the lack thereof of masculine, uh, 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 black masculine person. Of course, I get what you're saying, but that's why that's why we got to start controlling the narrative more. You got to start, I mean, this what better time to be living? What better time to be a content creator? Control the narrative, man. To be giving you that right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, it's Every, a to be. Yeah, yeah, well, I'm just right, saying like you could put, you know, Kanye on commercial on Tubi, you know, like it you can do whatever you want to do now right. as a content creator and but just make it good. Mm-hmm. That's the difference, right? Too like you know, make it good. 
So ain't you be owned by Fox? I don't know. Ugh. I don't know. I don't know. I don't I'm know. just. I mean, you know, there's a backhanded <laughs> thing about basically just create your own narrative. I got you. Right. I got create you. your own narrative. Okay. <laughs> Rent them spoons. <laughs> restaurant coming out with random spoons restaurant <laughs> what's the idea Where, where's it going random spoons now that was from um from the episode where he opened up the um waffles the waffle joint right yeah yeah that was fun that was fun yeah it was just one of those things i made up we made up at the moment and we didn't think it was going i i actually said it wrong I said it wrong. Like I read it wrong and then I said it wrong. But it worked. <laughs> it worked. Right. And you know, it's moments like that that I I forgot about. And then people it's stuck in people's minds and memories. And they be like, when you did that. Because none of that was scripted right. either. Mm. You know. Wow. Him I don't remember. Rent a spoon, rent them. I don't remember. I don't even remember. I just know, I know I messed it up because I had to keep doing it. Because they were like, "No, that's not it, Carl." I was like, "What? What is it?" You know, and that's where the remember I told you, you had one more time. You know what I'm saying and all that. Because again, that scene was supposed to be like real short. I just kept fucking with him, and he kept fucking with me, and I was like, "Rent them." Like it was like, <laughs> yeah, that wasn't supposed to happen. No, because I posted a picture of you today. And a lot of the comments was like, random spoons, what's going on with it? When you get the merch. Yeah, yeah, the merch yeah, I got from. you. I got you. I'm dropping you some off. We got to mm-hmm. take care of him. Dope, you know what I'm saying? Dope. I'm dropping, you know, take care of them. Make right. sure everybody got it, represent. Oh, I got my hook you up with all the merch. It's, it's definitely. Dope. Because what happened was I was wearing hat. Like, I just wanted my character to stand out back then. I wanted to, to you know, um, do things differently. Like how all was them I... hats. Yeah. yeah. All yeah. the coal hats. Yeah, yeah thanks. Yeah. There should be a coal hat shop Word. somewhere. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 coming. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, all right, yeah, all right. It's, That's it's, it's timing. It's timing. Right. Honestly, I used to think back back then when people kept trying to get me to do it, I was like, oh it's a fad. I kept because I kept seeing every everybody was coming out with stuff, giving us stuff to wear. Mm-hmm. But then they wouldn't be around next year. Mm-hmm. So to me, everything was a fad. Mm-hmm. So when you telling me to do it, I was like, yeah, I'm not doing that. Don't play myself. That's going to be over next year. I'm not doing that. Right. I mean, think about all the brands that came and went. There was some Stussy to Ed Hardy to... Carl Kanai. Echo. Yeah. Echo, massive. Carl Kanai. Cross um, Colors. And One, Cross mm-hmm. Colors. All of these joints was like... And then there would be... Fat uh, Farm, all that shit. Yeah, I was just like, yeah, I'm not doing that. I, I didn't see at the time, you know, but again, timing. Because now we're full circle and there's a bigger demand for it now. Right. This is vintage. And, and I know what I'm doing. Right. And what I, are you doing? You're going to tell us? Yeah. You, you show? Can we hear about the show? You're going to tell us? Like, what's going uh, on? Uh, oh, 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 oh. you talking about the show that, that's currently Yeah, on? yeah. Oh, gonna... Okay, no. So currently, <laughs> currently, currently, um, we're in our fifth, we're about to do our fifth season of Young Dylan. Mm. You know, it's a show on Nickelodeon uh, done with Tyler Perry's company, who's like one of the most amazing people. Like, like for real, for real, for real. Um, I direct a great number of those episodes along with other projects there at the studio. Um, he's definitely provided light that Hollywood don't provide at all, mm-hmm. uh, or hadn't been, I should say. Right. Different opportunities and whatnot. Um, he's a big giver in, in that way. Um, Special touring the country right now. Um, getting ready to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got, yeah. got the one man show, the one man show, one hour show, one man show. It's, it's going to be very different than what people would be either expecting or used to from a comedy show. Because mm-hmm. um, I take a lot from the old school, the old greats, and I play to a lot of my um, other skills. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I'll just say, nah, that'll be giving it away. God damn it. <laughs> I'll be giving away. But no, no, no. I'm just saying, like, I, I really. It's going to be something. It's going to be something. It's going to be something. Right. Um, there's a lot of. Uh, Whoopi Goldberg. Remember her first one man, one woman show? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Characters. So just. Oh, okay. Just know. Okay. Got it. It's going to be, you know. Got yeah. it. Got it. Got yeah. it. Got it. Got it. Does Cole show up? <laughs> 
Yes, but not as cold. Yeah, dun, dun, dun. yeah. It, it'll 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 be the birth of coal. Hmm? Oh, so I'll address it as how coal was born. Okay. Oh wow. You feel me? Yeah. Oh, I'm watching just for that. You feel okay, me? Yeah, yeah. 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 All right. Yeah, it's that. it's gonna be a different. All right. We gotta see it. Yeah. We gotta see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that's happening. That's great. Um, I'm nom- nominated for NAACP Image Award. Yeah. Yep. But, um, and that's I on behalf a, of. Uh, uh, I did a movie. I did a movie called Binged to Death with um, Lonnie Love. Uh, we did it for MTV. Uh, it came out last year. Um, it was a lot of fun. We did this movie up in Canada. It was great. Um, my agent called me the other day. Was like, "Yo, did you know?" And I was like, "Nah," which means somebody's watching, right? Somebody out there. Mm-hmm. You know, we started the year off with a bang with the Emmys. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. We did the Emmys. Um, that was a good look. And now this is happening. Now that's happening. And then my own show, my own TV shows. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's it's. And then I got a movie that I'm directing. And then I got another movie that um, I wrote. That's getting done, but I'm not directing it. So it's it's it's, it's, it's going to be a great some year. Looking for talent, is it a barbershop scene? Looking for some talent, be a great year. Absolutely, man. It, no, I had a good I had a good time here, so this is dope. <laughs> this is dope, and yeah. um, um, it's going to be a good year. It's, let's just say that, it's gonna, it, and, and it's going to continue from there. It's, this is the year of 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 being intentional. Everything has to be intentional, man. Everybody wants, but you you know when it's your time. You feel it, right? Everything's time. Yeah. 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 Yo, well, on behalf of uh, me and my baby moms, (laughs) before she was my baby moms, we going to a crib watching Martin, and now we got two beautiful daughters. Nice. Nice. (laughs) I want to thank you for not only helping uh, raise a lot of people that's in this room and and kind of showing us greatness, showing us a level, Mm. becoming a you said Super Bowl numbers, bro. Like that's, that's unheard of. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. For a show about us. Thank you for Love your you. service. Thank you. And thank you for everything you got coming. Call Rhythm Bay, Spoons. Y'all. Rhythm Spoons. Call Bay. Tune in to that special. When you up and you win and shit is awesome. Never felt real pain till a nigga lost one. If somebody take from you, what it's gon' cost them? Tired of niggas acting like they really put in work. Hit a boss, come be yourself. It'll do you better in the long run and see yourself. Staring down a barrel of a long gun. Some rappers never had no street cred, so they bought some. Try to cut the streets off, it turn into extortion. Everybody snitching, niggas bidding like an auction. Life is short till you hear it sentence when the court done. He was moving faster than a bullet, then he caught one. 